We got matching blue on. Always a special time. Two minutes. Two minutes. Joe, Staying is that all right right there? Football. Mic check testing. Homecoming, always a special time at Texas Southern University. Mic check, one, two, three, Southern, Texas Southern. Do they care about, I know when I do Southland Conference games, Certain schools don't like to be called things. Do they care if we say SWAT? No. Okay. No, no, yeah. I just some yeah. of these conferences are weird behind. Yeah, I know they want the whole yeah. Southwestern <laughs> athletic. <conference>. Exactly. <laughs> Exciting focus. Focus on football. Put out all distractions by Thursday. I know this. That's one thing about SWAT, man. The bands are always yep. bringing it. I have to tell myself, don't scream. Don't scream, just talk normal, because even though it sounds so loud, the mic picks up everything. I'm glad you told me that. Oh, no, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. I used to do that. Like, uh, we did so much stuff, like, one minute. The NCAA So tournament I don't need to where, yell then. No, no. Okay, cool. The mic will pick up everything. So, like, the way I'm talking? So the way I'm talking right now is fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Always a special time at Texas Southern University. A tradition of the order. Damping the pageantry in school spirit. Fifteen? In Texas at BBVA Compass Stadium, this is Tiger Football. Homecoming is always a special time at Texas Southern University. It is a tradition like no other. Not even the rain could dampen the pageantry and school spirit today. Even the TSU Tigers who went on to play in the NFL are back home to see Texas Southern take on their rivals from Louisiana Southern University. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our broadcast on Root Sports. I'm Butch Alcindor, along with former Texans and Rice University star Indy Kalu. We have Nick Strong on the sideline, and of course, Indy, you've been involved with a lot of homecoming right. games. How do you just push aside all the distractions and focus in on the work at hand? You know what? You make sure you take care of things yeah. during the week, and like you said, you just have to push it aside. And what I typically did in college when we had the homecoming, you had family, you had friends coming in, I made sure everything was done by Thursday. So Thursday evening, mentally, physically, you're only focused on football. When you look at these two teams, the Tigers and the Jaguars, it's like looking in a mirror. They come in to this one with identical three and three records. Identical records, identical playmakers, and identical offenses. Uh, TSU averaging 33 points a game, Southern averaging 35. So this is going to be a well-played-out game on offense. No doubt about it. We'll see how the rain works into that. Now let's check out our players to watch. And we start with the TSU quarterback, Avion Hurts, the redshirt junior, comes into this game making his fourth start of the year. I tell you what, he's dancing before the game, and he's going to be dancing during the game because he's a playmaker. Not only can he throw six touchdown passes last week, but he, he could also hurt you with his legs. He was also the swag player of the week, passing for 311 yards. That's not too bad at all. Of course, Hurts' number one target will be wearing number 80. That is Derek Griffin, the 6'7 freshman 
from Terry High School. And when you see his 6'7", you have to do a double take. Yes, he's 6'7", and when you see him, he's an impressive athlete. But not only does he look the part, he plays the part. He's a very accomplished wide receiver in his early career, and this is a guy that he's going to be targeted and he's going to be looked to throughout this entire game. And he delivers 21 catches, nine of which have gone for touchdowns. Pretty productive young fellow right there. No doubt about it. For Southern University, their big man is actually pretty small. He is Willie Quinn, who's about 5'5", five, five and 150 pounds soaking wet, and we will see him soaking wet today. Of course, he can make it happen. He can score from anywhere on the field. He's small in stature, but a huge heart. And what makes him so productive is that he gets it done during two phases. On offense, he's the sixth, wide receiver, sixth leading wide receiver in the conference. And as a kick returner, punt returner, he can really flip the field. And, of course, we are expecting a very exciting game here at BBVA Compass Stadium. Kickoff between the Tigers and the Jaguars is coming up. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. And you can see the TSU Tigers are getting ready for their big homecoming contest versus the Southern University Jaguars. This is a big, big rivalry for these teams. It really is. Let's take a look at quickly at the standings from the West and the SWAC as Coach Asbury's team trying to climb that hill and move up in the standings. You can see Grambling at 5-0, and oh, or they're setting the pace with Broderick Fobbs, the head coach there, doing a fine job. And then there's Southern at 3-1 and one and Texas Southern at 2-3. and three. And you see Texas Southern 2-3 and three losing record in conference play. But you know what? It's still early enough to change what's going on and to meet your goals. So this is a big game for Texas Southern. It is a big game, and the winner of this game is going to have high hopes for moving on up in those standings. Right, and that's what you talk about. You know, this is a big game because it's homecoming. It's a big game because it's conference play. And like you said, they're trying to fight up to get where Grambling and Prairie View are when it comes to the conference rankings. You know, talking to Coach Asbury this week, he had a very unique way of looking at it. And what he said was, we are looking at this as a two-game season right now. We need to win this week, and then we need to win next week to get ultimately to where we want to go, and that is to have a winning season. And I'm sure he takes it a step further. When he's talking to you, he's telling you he's looking at it as a two-game uh, season. But when he talks to his players, I guarantee he's telling them, take it one game at a time, one play at a time, and that's what I expect to see out here. Eric Medina's kick is up, and the whistles are blowing, and we have a stoppage in play right off the bat. We will see what the officials have on that. You know, Andy, you have a game like this, uh, the weather is going to be a big factor. Right now it's perfect. There's no problem, but you can see that overcast, and we know the rain is coming. You can see the overcast, and it's starting to drizzle. You can barely see it, but I'm starting to see some uh, rain fall. And what that does, that makes for a slicker field and a slicker ball. So two, two teams that actually like to throw the ball, I'm curious to see how it's going to affect the play calling on offense, if they're going to stick to the run or if they're going to stick to their play. Well, that's a very good point because they both like to air it out, and they like to air it out a lot. And uh, when you have a situation like this, it'll, it'll be really important to see how well the field will hold up also. 
But if they do decide to run, both teams have very formidable running backs. When you look to Southern, they have a Lenard Tillery, who is the workhorse. He has more attempts than any other running back in the conference. Eric Medina tees it up again, and it's going to be Willie Quinn takes it at his own three-yard line. Quinn has a low running room, bounces it to the outside. Quinn down the sideline, has some room to go, a big block right there. Willie Quinn is down the sideline, one man to beat, and Quinn will be in for the touchdown for the Southern Jaguars. And what a start to this game. We talked on the outset about how dangerous Willie Quinn is. And boy, he gave us a sample of that. And I think he may have gotten hurt on the play. He's grabbing the back right there, looking at that uh, hamstring problem. But take a look at that, Indy. You know, we talked about it. You talked about it, how he is in the open field. And once he gets ahead of steam going, he is very fast and hard to catch, even if you have the right angles. But you have to credit the guys blocking it for him, but also his explosiveness and his speed. The burst of speed is what got him out into the opening, but you're right. He picked up several good blocks down the sideline. Greg Pittman on to add the extra point, and it is good. And just like that, the Southern Jaguars break out on top in this one, 7 nothing over the TSU Tigers. And that is huge. I mean, we've talked about the weather. We've talked about how will it affect the offensive play calling. When you can get out there and get a score on special teams on the first special team play of the game, it does ease things up. I'm not saying that they're going to take their foot off the gas on offense, but it allows you to be a little bit more conservative offensively with the weather that they're expecting. You know, talking to the coaches, they talked a lot about Willie Quinn, and they compared him to Reggie Bush. And it's not just because he's wearing that number 25 that Reggie wore with the Saints. But he, he kind of looks like him out there. All right. It's one thing to talk about speed, but not only does he have speed, he has quickness and burst, and that's what makes a good return man. And you saw him show all the characteristics of a good return man on that one play. So now the Jaguars are going to kick it back. We're just 14.45. We're just 15 seconds <laughs> into the first quarter. So if this is a sign of things to come, we're in store for a whale of a ball game today at BBVA Compass Stadium. And what Coach Asbury has to preach to his team is to put it behind them. They're down 7-0. That is the worst way to start the game for a Texas Southern. But they have to put it behind themselves and claw their way back into it. That's a very good point because, you know, it's kind of shocking right. when a game opens like that with a kickoff return because that is like the last thing you expect. So now on the sideline, you're right. You tell the guys, okay, calm down, fellas. That's just 15 seconds into this. We have a lot of football left to play. And Greg Pitt Pittman's kick is up. And the Tigers on the return. Coming right there, it's Austin Watts, and he makes a fine return before he's upended at about the 35-yard line. A fine return that ended with a big hit. I give him as much credit for holding on to the ball as I do that nice return. Big return for the Tigers, and they needed that. Austin Watts getting in right there, found the little hole, and takes it out to the 35. It took a big hit from the kicker. Most of the time you don't see kickers lay out uh, the return man like that, but Greg Pittman with a big hit on that stop. Kicker trying to mix it up <laughs> some, so the Tigers start first and 10 from about their 36-yard line. Avion Hurts to throw. Has Derek Griffin open, and that's a completion and a nice game for the TSU Tigers on first down. Nice game, and I always like to see the offensive uh, team start off with short passes to get the confidence of the quarterback and the receivers early on. Gain of about seven on first down, so the Tigers have a second and three coming up. Woodard in the backfield. Woodard takes the handoff. Woodard off tackle, and he's going to be very close to that first down before he is wrapped up by a host of uh, uh, Jaguars there. And that's what happens when you're able to pick up the positive yards on the first down. Then you get to second and manageable, manageable, and now they have third and short. So this is a deal where they don't have to throw the ball. They can run it, and it makes the defense. It keeps them guessing because they don't know exactly what's going to come their way. This is a down where you have some options. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you have a lot of plays you can go to on third and about a yard for the TSU Tigers. Avion Hurts looking to pass, going downfield, looking for Griffin, and he overthrows him. It's going to be incomplete on the play. 
I'll tell you what, with the options that you talked about, I'm surprised that they were so aggressive going downfield. I expected intermediate or short passing routes if they didn't run the ball or if they didn't even try to use Avion Hurts to pick up the first down with his legs. I'm surprised that they went for such a deep pass on that third and short. A big pass, and uh, usually you go for a big pass if you are going to go for it on fourth down, right, exactly. if you already have your mind made up. But I think we're going to punt it away now. So we're going to have a chance to see not Mr. Quinn this time, And like you said, Quinn, he was limping off the field after that big return, so we'll keep an eye on his hamstring. That's right. That's why we have Nico Talbert back to return the punt, and he fumbles the football, and the Tigers appear to have made the recovery. What a big, important point. You mentioned how Quinn went out, appeared to have an, a leg injury. They came right back in with his replacement into the ball game, and that did not work out well. Nico Talbert apparently could not handle the punt, he fumbles it away, and the TSU Tigers have made the recovery. It's Archie Rice who was down at the bottom of that pile and coming up with the football. As you see the replay, that's the one thing Texas Southern really needed with the way the game opened. They were able to get the botched kick, and now they have very, very good field position. What a break early on for the Texas Southern Tigers. And Nico Talbert, he just never looked comfortable there. He, you know, you see him wait for the fair catch, and he just never looked comfortable getting underneath the ball to secure the catch. Tigers operating out of the red zone now. First down, Hurts back to pass, dumps it over the middle. It's going to be incomplete, and we have a flag down on the play. He was trying to set up that little wide receiver screen as he came back inside, but the pass was way too low for Malik Cross. Our game referee, Roderick Holloway, said the Jaguars were offside, so the TSU Tigers will come up with five yards. That was Gabe Eccles on the play for the Jaguars, breaking that thing up. You're trying to get a jump on the snap, but when you're backed up like that, that's when your defensive linemen really have to be aware of the snap count and where they line up. Avion Hurts hands it to Brad Woodard. He goes straight ahead and look at Brad Woodard moving that pile all the way down to about the three, maybe the two-yard line. And Brad Woodard, only one touchdown on the season, but he's averaging over six yards a carry, so I expect to see him, especially in the red zone, get the ball out and hopefully punch it in for the TSU Tigers. Brad Woodard, who's from Lamarck, Texas, uh, he's, he's come on. He's really, really come on. Uh, he's a freshman running back. 5'8", and uh, he didn't start the season getting a lot of playing time, but the young man has really proved himself over the last couple of ball games. This time, Hertz takes it from behind center. Hands again to Woodard, and he dives in for the touchdown for the TSU Tigers. So the Tigers capitalizing on the turnover, getting it in for the touchdown. And you'll see a big hole that the offensive line gave him. He was able to dive, but he was untouched until he crossed the goal line. When you see that, when you see the player, look, he doesn't get the first contact until he's crossed the goal line. You credit the big guys up front for creating such a nice running space for him. That offensive line punching open some big holes down there. Look at him giving the money sign there <laughs> in the end zone. He needs to pat those offensive linemen on the back and say thank you. He really should. Eric Medina for the extra point, and his kick is up and through. And we have ourselves a tie ball game. 7-7. Seven, seven. We have a timeout on the field, and we're going to pause for a timeout in the booth with the Southern Jaguars and the TSU Tigers tied at 7 in the first quarter. Chris, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. 
But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration to be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. And we are back in what a start. A homecoming game for the TSU Tigers with the Southern Jaguars, and that was a big play in the game right there. The fumble right there on the punt return, setting up the TSU Tigers in the red zone. No, that was a big play, and that was a big boost for Texas Southern. The way the game started with Southern taking the kickoff back to the house, Texas Southern needed something to rally behind and get the momentum back. So now you pretty much have an even game, 7-7, and the coaches are going to say, look, let's settle down. It's homecoming, big rivalry. Now let's get the ball, secure the ball on both sides and play the football that we know we can play. Plus, I like the way they did that. You got the ball in the red zone. You down that close, pound it in on Pound it in. I mean, that can really take a, a toll on a defense when you can score that way, where you don't have to pass the ball in. When you can just run it straight ahead. When it's one of those deals, just like you mentioned, Bush, when you know it's going to be a run yeah. and you can't stop it, like <laughs> that does get in the mindset of a defense. You, you start to think <laughs> it's going to be a long day, and you start to think that very early right. on. Danny Johnson and Lenore Tillery, the running back, back to return to kickoff. So obviously there's something wrong with Mr. Quinn because Willie Quinn is still not back returning kicks. So apparently he had a pull because we saw him, and that's something else. You know, you got an overcast day like this. He didn't get a chance to loosen up very well, and he pulled something. And Medina's kick is on the way. It's going to be short. One of the upbacks takes it, and he has a hole onto the outside. And he's finally knocked out of bounds at the 39. I'll tell you what, the right side Mike of TSU's Jones. kickoff team is really getting gassed. And you see big lanes, big openings on the right side of that coach, uh, of the right side of that kickoff team. You see as he comes towards the bottom of your screen, there, is, there aren't any lanes that are created by your TSU defenders. Mike Jones on the return. He was one of the up men. It was a short kick. He took it, and he went right down the sideline. So... Two kickoffs and two big returns for the Jaguars to put them in excellent field position. And this is the first time we're going to see the Jaguars on offense. Quarterback is Austin Howard, number seven. He completes his pass on the outside, and it's going to be good for about a short gain. It looks like Quinn is back in the game, which is good news for Southern. And that's Willie Quinn making the catch. They were trying to get him that little wide receiver screen. Quinn cuts it back inside, and the Tigers stuffed that out pretty good. A quick recovery by TSU to knock him down there. Second down and short for the Jaguars. Austin Howard to throw again, completes his pass. And it's Talbert who steps out of bounds after picking up the first down. Nico Talbert, the guy who made the fumble on the punt, comes up with a nice catch there and a first down for the Southern Jaguars. And like you mentioned, he is the one who came up with the fumble. Th these are the plays that Nico Talbert are going to need to get his confidence going. Trust me, right now he's feeling that he let his team down. But as he continues the game and continues to make those type of plays, he will get his confidence. Handoff inside goes to Lenard. Tillery, of course, he's a big running back for the Southern Jaguars, and here comes the rain, Indy, and it's coming down in sheets right now, so that will also have an effect on this ball game quickly. Right, and that's where Southern says, you know what, they may have to rely more on Lenar Tillery, but they're okay with that. And like I said, he has the most attempts in the conference, and he is very productive when he has the ball in his hands. Jaguars hand it to Tillery again, and he spun down quickly, right there by big number 97 that's Damon King with a fine play by the Tigers watch Damon King the defensive end and right there that's a smart play the offensive tackle blocks down but he doesn't go chasing ghosts as they like to say he stays in his position and there isn't anywhere for Tillery to run he, nice, took, smart he took care of his business he was playing his assignment that was his man he stayed home and came up with a big play for the Tigers So now we got a third down as the rain continues to fall for Austin Howard and the Jaguars offense. Howard 
keeping around the right side, looking for some room, and he's going to be very close to that first down before he's knocked out of bounds by Dondre Dobbins and Claiborne over there on the stop for the TSU Tigers. And right here you see the cornerbacks, the defensive ends, they do a good job making him stretch that player all the way out before he could cut upfield, and that is why he was not able to pick up the first down because the defense played sound defense, and he, they kept that play going east and west, and he never really had an opportunity to break it upfield. Okay, that, this is going to be a key down yes. in the ball game, fourth and a yard, and the Jaguars are going to go for it. Austin Howard, hands inside, he goes and he's going to pick up the first down. And I like the call, didn't try to get too cute. That was a deal where it was fourth, and you're in four down territory. Let's face it, when you're this close to the end zone, with the rain, I'm not sure how confident they feel that their kicker can make it, but with that, that type of black and blue football, as we used to call it, you're going to get the first down when your offensive line gets the push that they got. Malcolm Crockett on the carry, and he took it straight ahead. He needed a yard. He got three. It's going to be first and goal to go for the Jaguars. Austin Howard turns around, hands to Crockett again. He has nowhere to go. A big play. Amir Bloom, one of the first Tigers to get there, and so did Zacchaeus Bami Joko with another big stop. And Amir Bloom, we'll be talking about him a lot. You see him chase the play from behind. This is an all-swag first-team performer. He can play against the pass. He led the team in sacks in 2013. And you see right there his hustle allows him to uh, produce against the run. That was a fine defensive play. They were waiting for that all the way. So second down, second and goal now for Southern. That got knocked back to close to the 10-yard line. Austin Howard setting up a power set. Nice fake. Bootlegs it out to the left. Passes into the end zone, and it's incomplete. And here comes a late flag. And they're going to get the Tigers for pass interference. And the flag came from the ref, who was a little further away from the player, but he had a better angle when it comes to his sight. The ref that was in the end of the end zone didn't see fit to call a flag. So let's see if they'll discuss. No discussion. Either. No discussion. Uh, Dondre Dobbins, number 25, I think, was the guilty culprit right there. And just for a second, I thought he might not call it because it took him just a half a second before he called it. Right there. It's tough to tell on that. This is a good angle. Yeah, there was some contact before the ball made it to the receiver. Austin Howard gives inside, and it is a touchdown for the Southern Jaguars. They come right back. That's Tillery taking the handoff. Lenore Tillery takes it, and he is in for the touchdown for Southern University. And as we mentioned, up front, one thing Southern is doing when it's obvious rundowns are not trying to get too cute. They're just punching the ball in between the guards, the center guards and tackles doing a good job getting that push up front on the short plays. So Greg Pittman is on for the extra point, and his kick is up and through the uprights, and just like that, now Southern moves back on top. 8.30 to go in the first quarter, and the Southern Jaguars are leading the TSU Tigers. We have a 14-7 to score with a lot of action left to play. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever.
Southern Jaguars and the TSU Tigers are off to a really quick start in this one. A nice drive by the Jaguars as they came right back after the TSU touchdown. That's Tillery being thrown down, and then they continued. That was the big play, the pass interference call. Yeah, that was definitely the big play. It allowed them to get first and go and get very close to the end zone, and they just had to punch it in. So big plays, special teams, big plays on offense, and some mistakes from both sides when it comes to kickoff coverage and penalties. Tillery took it on in for the touchdown. Right now, 14-7 Southern Jaguars. It is homecoming for TSU, and the Tigers are getting set to get their hands on the football again. Pittman's kick is up, and it's going to be a little short. Clyde Lee is going to field about the 11-yard line. Clyde Lee has some room around the right side, has a blocker. Clyde stopped tiptoeing and turned the corner. He had some room there before he's finally knocked out of bounds. But a nice return for the TSU Tigers. A nice return, and like you mentioned, nice blocking up front, number 87 with a pancake block, and it allows him to get some more room. You see it right there. I mean, that's a teammate who wants to get his returner some yards. Very, very nice block. That's a great block before Dakota Starks of the Jaguars knocked him out of bounds. So TSU will start first and 10 from about the 34-yard line. Avion Hurts still in at quarterback, as we mentioned on the top, his fourth start of the year. Gets it over to Larry Clark. Clark slips away from one tackler, but he has nowhere to go. He's hit in the backfield. That's going to be a three-yard loss on the play. Trying to get it to Clark really quick so he can make a play. Daniel Brown leading the Jaguars charge on that one. Just a nice job with pursuit. As soon as Clark received the ball, he didn't have anywhere to go. And nice gang tackling. When you make the first guy miss, but you don't have room because there are three other white shirts, you credit the entire defense for hustling over to the ball carrier. Avion Hurts gives it to Brad Woodard, and he is thrown down in the backfield on a big play by number 91, Christian Allen. And he got in the backfield almost fast enough to take the handoff that time. That's it. Big fella came up with a huge play. Right. When you talk about playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage, that's exactly what Christian Allen does on this play. He uses his quickness, only 258 pounds, which isn't big for a defensive tackle, but he utilizes his quickness in that first step to get the tackle for loss. That play never really had a chance to get going, so now the Tigers are going to have a third and about 18 to go. Hurts under pressure, scrambling right, still on his feet, and he is caught behind the line. Avion Hurts goes down. Contavious Preston, the first Southern player to get there in the rain, as Hurts had nowhere to go, and he is taken down on the sack. And I'll tell you what, that play starts with number 41, Simeon, coming off the right side of your screen. He has a nice up-the-field rush move, and he gets, he gets Avion Hurst running and out of the pocket, and that's where the rest of the team comes to clean it up. But a nice outside pass rush move by number 41 to get that started. Simeon Houston looking a little bit like Simeon Rice on that play, Butch. He did. Corey Carter is on the punt, and he gets his kick away. A wobbly kick, and it is... Looked like it hit one of the TSU Tigers, so it's going to be down right there at about the 33-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. So the TSU Tigers are going to go back on defense now. At this point, let's take a timeout to recognize the team uniforms by Russell Athletic, the team uniforms. You know, to play well, you have to look well, and the TSU Tigers looking pretty sharp today. It's homecoming, so you want to be dressed your best, the, ma the maroon and gray of the Russell Athletic uniform, the team uniform for the SWAC Conference. I remember I had a chance to play with Deion Sanders, and he always said, Indy, if you look good, you're going to feel good. If you feel good, you're going to play good. And both of those teams, TSU especially, looking really nice in their uniforms. You know, why does it not surprise me that Deion would say that? <laughs> I, Deion is always sharp. Always sharp. Jaguars start first and 10. Austin Howard's pass is complete to Willie Quinn. Quinn trying to turn the corner, still on his feet and probably thrown, finally thrown out of bounds right there after picking up the first down. And this is what makes Willie Quinn such a special player. You see what he does when he gets the ball in his hands. This isn't a huge play, but look at the yards that he picks up using his quickness and not never giving up on a play until he's pushed out of bounds or falls to the ground. Jamal Lucas taking him down from behind, making the stop for TSU. So that's a first down for the Jaguars. Handoff goes to Willie Quinn coming on the reverse. 
and he's going to be wrapped up. Good job by the TSU Tigers stringing that play out and then coming up with the stop. Stringing it out and staying where they're supposed to stay. You talk, about, a, you talk about assignment football and watch the defenders. They're not faked out by this play. They understand where they need to be, and they continue to pursue, making him run east and west. Dondre Dobbins coming up right there from his safety position, making the stop. Big, big play. So now you got second and eight coming up for the Jaguars. We have number two, the Deontay Shorts is in the game at quarterback now. Pass is completed. Right there to number 86 coming up with a big catch and, a, and the first down on the play. Mason Caesar. I tell you what, it's kind of hard to, that two almost looks like a seven, but that is a number two. And that is Deontay Shorts in a quarterback. So I'm not sure what happened to Austin Howard. Handoff inside to Tillery, does a little dance, cuts it back, and has a nice game for the Jaguars. And once again, running behind that offense in between the guards, you have Terrell Lee at center, Anthony Mosley and Jamal Bolden as your guards. They are creating room, and they're getting push up front to allow Tillery to pick up those positive yards. And there's another flag down on the play. So that will push the Jaguars back a little bit. Roderick Holloway, our referee for today's game, and the Jaguars are guilty of a false start. That's Bradley Coleman, the uh, guilty party on that play. When you have your backup quarterback in, I'm not sure what's going on with Austin Howard, the starter. You definitely don't want to get the, you never want to get penalties, but when you have your backup quarterback, you don't want to put him in those throwing downs with penalties. First and 15, he hands it to Tillery, and he has a lot of room to roam before he is finally upended, not before he picks up the first down. A big, big play by Lenard Tillery coming in. Raheem McMorris up for the TSU Tigers to make the stop. I'll tell you what, that makes life a little bit easier for the backup quarterback when you have a runner like Lenard Tillery and the offensive line doing what they're doing with their run blocks. Tillery is the leading rusher in the SWAC, and he's given us just a little bit why. Deontay Shorts on the keeper, and he picks up a nice game. You see these big gaping holes being created by the blockers, and not just the offensive linemen, but the tight ends and the receivers. Everybody taking pride in blocking for Southern right now. Nice keeper, and he had quick feet on the play, turned the corner, and came up with a nice game. So the Jaguars back in the red zone again. It's going to be first and goal from about, looks like the six-yard line. Shorts keeping around the right, left side, looking for some place to go, and the Tigers stack that thing up in a hurry. He had nowhere to go on the play. He didn't have anywhere to go following his blockers, but there were more defenders than blockers. And like you said, they were stringing it out. And as you see him follow his, football, uh, his full back, he's being patient, but there are just too many burgundy jerseys around him. Archie Rice leading the charge for TSU. Derek Lyles giving chase. Like you said, they just strung it out down the line, down the line, until he finally had nowhere to go. He had to turn it up inside. So that's going to bring up second and goal for the Jaguars. Short gives it again off. And that is number three, Malcolm Crockett. And he has nowhere to go. They kind of got him out of bounds. It was Archie Rice again up there quickly to make the stop. And you're noticing with this TSU defense, they've been giving up many yards in between the guards and tackles. But when they string it outside, that's where they play their best defense early on in this game. Third down. Third and goal to go for the Southern Jaguars. Deontay Shorts in at quarterback, and he has put together a really good drive. And that may have been Amir Bloom jumping off sides. And he tried to time the snap. You can't fault him for that. But when you have a guy like Amir Bloom. Wow. 
as they call the offsides. He's just trying to jump the count right there and get the best jump possible. About two steps too early. So that's going to push them a little closer. The penalty will make it half the distance to the goal. So the Jaguars will come up with third down. And uh, that, that, uh, how does that change your play call when you get that much yardage moving closer to the goal? No, you can open it up. You know, you don't think it has to be a pass. Uh, you can yeah. spread it out. They're, they're just, the closer you get off those penalties, you can open up your playbook a little more. Hand off to Tillery, and he banged his way into the end zone. And that is a touchdown for the Southern Jaguars. And I'll tell you what, when you have a running back like Tillery, you don't need to open up your playbook too much. This is a nice, tough runner. He gets behind his pass, and what I like, he delivers the contact. The defensive player is the one who's taking the hit and not delivering the hit on that run. Zacchaeus Bami Joko came off the block, met him in the hole, but by that point, Tillery had a full head of steam, and there's really not much you can do at that point. So Greg Pittman is on for the extra point, and his kick is up and good. So the Southern University Jaguars find themselves out in front, leading 21 to 7. What do you what do you think about this? You, t you tell your team at this point, you know, the defense has been doing a great job this season as far as putting the offense in good field position. But so far, Southern has had some sustained drives. Oh, right, they have. And with Southern, if you're the TSU defensive coordinator, Coach Northern, and the rest of that staff, you have to shore up what's going on in between the tackles. That's where Southern's picking up many of their yards. So that's where you have to get your X and O's. You get your linebackers to play those eight gaps and play stout football. And if you're Southern, you just continue to do what you're doing until they stop it. Well, don't forget the next TSU football game here at BBVA Compass Stadium. The Tigers will take on the College of Faith. That's on October 31st. It is a 1 p.m. start, so get your tickets now. They are on sale today. You can also log on to TSUball.com to come out and check out the TSU Tigers as they take on the College of Faith. That's next Saturday, October 31st. So if you're the head coach, if you're Coach Asbury, what are you telling you, you guys on the sideline? And right now, look, we're down two touchdowns. It's still early on. We're in the first quarter still. This is a team that can come back, but you don't want to try to get it all back on one play. Pittman's kick is short. It is taken by one of the up guys, and it's going to be a nice return for the TSU Tigers as they get it almost near midfield. And when you have this type of field position, you have to leave with some points on the board, whether it's a field goal, whether you score a touchdown. When you get the ball in your own territory, in the defender's territory, you have to leave away with something on the board. That was Tevin Jones on the kickoff return. He went to the short man, and I'm sure that's a strategy, too. You have a wet, sloppy field right. now. They're trying to minimize every return they can. So both teams are trying to kick the football short. Tigers will go to work first and 10 from the 48-yard line. Avion Hurts still on at quarterback, hands it to Brad Woodard. He's trying to get around the right side. One man to beat, and Woodard could not turn the corner. He is forced out of bounds by number 29, Jamar Mitchell. Yes, Jamar Mitchell does a nice job setting the block and with his run support. His first thought is to defend the pass, but you see him shed the block of the receiver and get up there and get the run support that you need out of your cornerback. A loss of two on the play, so the TSU Tigers will come out. It will be second and 12. They have three wide receivers out to the right, and they put Griffin in motion. He goes across to the left. Avion Hurts back to pass. Looks over the middle, has a man wide open. That's Larry Clark. Larry Clark the third is in for the touchdown, and what a call. What a call. Larry Clark didn't have a man anywhere in his area, area zone there. Right, there was some kind code. of blown coverage, a mental breakdown by Southern, their defensive backs, but credit Avion Hurts for finding the open man and delivering the ball right where it needed to be. But when you're that wide open, like you mentioned, Bush, yeah. there was a mental breakdown. There wasn't a Jaguar in his area code. The thing you don't want to do there is overthrow that. Absolutely. You don't want to miss it, and he made sure. A fine, fine play by Avion Hurts and Larry Clark the third cashing in for the touchdown. Eric Medina completes the extra point, and we have ourselves a shootout going on 
here at BBVA Compass Stadium, Larry Clark. Larry Clark had a fine season last year, and he came back this year, and he said, I'm going to change my number. He was 85 last year. He went to 13 this year. You would think 13 has been an unlucky number, right. but not for Larry Clark. Uh, no, it was definitely lucky on that play and unlucky for Southern as they were not able to look and find the route that he was running, and that's why he had a wide open touchdown. You know, we talked a little bit about Let's take a look at that touchdown pass again. Avion Hurts with just a beautiful pass. Laid it right out there for him. A good catch by Clark. And he takes it in for the touchdown. And when you're down 21-7, to what a big play to put you right back in this game. That is a big play, and that's why you never get down on your team, on yourself as a player. You've seen it. I've seen it. There have been so many great comebacks. When you're only in the first quarter, though the score was 21-7 with that touchdown, they're right back in it. You know, I was talking to Coach Asbury this week about Avion Hurts, and he said the thing that he really likes about him is he really has a great football IQ. His dad was a high school football coach, and he said he really understands the game. And he can look in the secondary, and he can see things that it takes some other guys a little time to pick up. Right, as open as Clark was, there are some quarterbacks that they just don't see it or they would have missed it. But like you mentioned, when he plays with his mind and he understands where the breakdown occurs, that's why he was able to hit Clark for such a wide open pass. And only one interception on the season. He definitely takes care of that football. So Medina pooches it up and short to the Jaguars. They hold it in. Broke, they broke a tackle, and now he's got some running room on the other side. And just like we said, they have been very weak on the right side of their kickoff coverage. Though they kicked the ball to their left side, the returner did a very good job saying, you know what, our last two returns, we've been picking up big yards on the right side, and that's why he adjusts and runs to the right side of that kickoff coverage and picks up many yards. That is Danny Jones, and he, was, he found it was stopped up over there, Danny Johnson, so he reversed his field, came back, and all the yardage is coming on the left side of the field. But a big return, so you have to look at this. For the whole first quarter, Southern has found themselves with great field position every time they've touched the football. So they're, they're playing with half a field right now. And TSU, they understood where their weak part of their kickoff unit was. That's why they went to the left side. But like we said, he reversed field and went back to that weak side. Okay, Austin Howard back in the game at quarterback, but we have flags down on the play. It's going to be an illegal procedure for the offense. So that will back the Jaguars up five. So apparently Southern's going to rotate their quarterbacks in because we see Austin Howard is back in the game. And that was after Deontay Schwartz led the last touchdown drive. Jaguars go first and 15. The handoff goes inside to Crockett. And he had a lot of room to dance before he's finally knocked down. Malcolm Crockett on the carry for the Southern Jaguars. And part of the reason they had success on that play was the timing. I mean, they really waited before they handed the ball off on that draw, and they allowed to, the blocks to occur and the lanes to open up. That's a good point because you see so much of that zone read today, but if the quarterback is too fast, you know, the defense sees that if he's too, too slow, they blow it up. So that was a great call. The pass from Howard over the middle has his man, and he's going to be knocked down at about the one-yard line. That is number six. And what Nico I like about Talbert the, what on I, the slant. What I like about this player, as you see it on the replay, he leads his receiver. On that slant uh, route, he did not have to stop and go back for the ball. It was a little bit behind him, but he didn't have to break stride. And Crockett, and the ball is fumbled. It goes up in the air, and the Tigers say they have the recovery. Let's see what the ruling is down on the field. He tried the quick handoff. They tried to get quickly to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball. And somehow you're going to expect that to happen on a wet field. And it is the Tigers football. The recovery by Zacchaeus Bami Joko right there coming up with the recovery. Take a look. They went quickly from the line. And then there's the football. And just a big hit. And when you talk about that slick football, it's going to be slippery. And right there, he put his helmet on the ball and was able to break it loose. Look at Darian Claiborne. Almost picked that he thing does. out of midair. <laughs> he would have been going the other way. And he caught that. He tried to bring it in. A big play by the TSU defense denying the Southern Jaguars after they started with excellent field position. Second big break for Texas Southern. 
with that turnover right there. Last week, Southern had six fumbles, so they definitely were talking about that this week, and they want to keep that number down off to a bad start when it comes to that. Avion Hurts hands it off to Brad Woodard, and Woodard is knocked down right at about the five. And in, uh, when you're playing in conditions like this, you really want to make sure you secure that football right. because it, it's a lot easier to knock that thing out of there. We have a TSU player that is down injured. We're going to pause for a timeout. We'll come back and check on his condition right now with the score in BBVA Compass Stadium. After one, it's the Southern Jaguars 21 and the TSU Tigers 14. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like French's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. And you can see the TSU sideline as the Tigers are coming up with their next plan of attack as they take on the Southern Jaguars for homecoming. Before we left, there was an injury on the field. It was left guard, number 74, Drew Moore. He was helped off the field and appeared to be coming off on his own power. Right, and it looks like his backup, Corey Griner, 6'4", 300-pound redshirt freshman, will take his place now. So Avion Hurts operating out of his own end zone. It's going to be second and eight as we start the second quarter. Hurts looking to pass, running out of time. Now he has to scramble. Hurts still looking downfield, and he fires for Griffin, but it's incomplete near the sideline. And that's where Hurts can really hurt you as a defender. He's able to buy time with his legs. And like you mentioned, a very smart player. You know, he didn't panic. He's in the end zone, as you see, when he drops back. And he throws an accurate pass on the run. But his receiver has to come down with that ball. Well, and I like the fact that he put it where his receiver was going to get it or nobody was going to get it. Right. And when you get hit in the shoulder pads as a receiver, you definitely want to come down with that ball. So the Tigers are looking at a big third down. It's going to be third and eight. Hertz is going to be working out of his own end zone here. Looking to pass and then slips it inside to Brad Woodard. Woodard is caught and knocked down at about the one-yard line. It appeared the Jaguars were trying to drag him back into the end zone. But Brad, the, the young freshman, was strong enough to keep himself out of the end zone. But the draw play, not a, not a bad call. It just didn't work. Not a bad call. Just Southern had the right defensive call. They had a linebacker blitzing in, and it was a run blitz on that play. And he ran right into the draw. So more of a good play, good call on the Southern side than it was a bad play on Texas Southern. So Corey Carter is going to be punting from the back edge of the end zone. And not much room to work. You'll Either Southern's going to focus on going after this punt or with the field position that they're going to get, they may just try to set up a good return. And it, it, it was smart. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Texas Southern just called timeout. And it appeared that... It, they call timeout for the Texas Southern Tigers. We're going to take a timeout, too. We're going to go to break, and we'll be right back at BBVA Compass Stadium with the Southern Jaguars leading TSU 21-14. Hey, football fans. 
Come out for a battle on the gridiron. It's the Red River State Fair Classic. Grambling State University takes on Texas Southern in the Independent Stadium on November 7th at 2 p.m. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com, Grambling State University Ticket Office, and the Louisiana State Fair Ticket Office in Shreveport. Your purchase ticket also gets you free admission to the State Fair. Don't miss all of the excitement November 7th in Shreveport. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. And there is uh, Tex or Rex or which, I'm not sure which one it is, but uh, he's enjoying homecoming there on the sideline as the TSU Tigers get set to punt it out of their own end zone. The last time they called timeout because they saw Willie Quinn had come back into the game. That's the young man that returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Coach Asbury noticed it on the sideline. They called timeout so they could make sure they knew that he was back in the game. And I don't blame them. You better have something dialed up to defend him. Corey Carter with a great awesome. kick. What a great kick. He boomed it. My goodness. Going to be picked up by Willie Quinn, and he's waiting for some maroon shirts to show up. Quinn in a lot of trouble back there. He goes all the way wow. back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Quinn goes all the way back around the left side, and there's a flag and maybe a late hit on the Tigers. It looked like Billy Rosenberg, the tight end, was over there. And it might be a late hit on the Tigers, but. I tell you what, Butch, when he started dancing and he was waiting on the defenders to come down, I was second guessing that move, but I almost forgot how special of a player Quinn really is. Number 53, mm. Gary Holmes is the guilty party hitting Quinn out of bounds. And, and I agree with you. What a great kick by Corey Carter. He probably outkicked his coverage there. I mean, it was a super kick. And they get down there. And I, I didn't know what Quinn was doing for a while. It looked like somebody had blew the whistle or something. That's actually what I thought. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't hear a whistle. And the way he stopped and he let his defense, not, not just uh, letting the defenders come, but he was letting his blockers set, set, up, the up, set up the blocks in the lanes. And just a heck of a return because that was a great punt. So Austin Howard in the Jaguars offense in great field position now at about the 43-yard line. Howard's pass is complete to Nico Talbert. Talbert with a nice gain on first down. And right now, TSU's defense, this is where they have to man up, and they may have to. Well, that's a big. Big break for the TSU defense there. The Jaguars guilty of holding, so it's going to push him back. Mike Jones, the gentleman who was caught holding there. And while I have a second, a good time to remind you, you can catch the TSU football replay live in HD on Root Sports all season long. Root Sports, the home of Tiger football. I mean, you can catch the Tigers action live. And we're on Root Sports this year, and, and the TSU, Texas Southern University, very happy to be on Root Sports this season. And, you, you know, it's just a great place to broadcast, and we have ourselves a whale of a game to check out today. Very entertaining from the jump, from the start. So after the penalty, it's going to be first and 20. Austin Howard on the keeper around the left side gets a good block, and he goes out of bounds right at the 40-yard line. Raheem McMorris. 
is there to escort him out for the TSU Tigers. And Texas Southern, their defense, they really have to limit these big runs. You talk about an offense where they were hit with the penalty, they moved back, but they pick up the majority of it on just a simple quarterback run. Texas Southern needs to be a little more stout playing the run this game. Southern has been able to pick up so many yards running the ball. Austin Howard, second down, fakes the handoff to Tillery. Howard under pressure, had a man open, and it goes through Tillman's hands. He had enough for the first down. The pass was right on the money, but Tillman could not hang on. Talbert, excuse me, Talbert on the play could not hang on. And like you said, he put the ball exactly where it needed to be. And I wouldn't call that alligator arm. I think that's more because the ball is slick with the way the, uh, with the drizzling that's going on. He knew he was going to get hit. He didn't short arm it, but he also didn't catch it either. Talbert letting that ball slip right through his hands. So we got third and about 12 coming up for the Jaguars. They have three wide receivers out to the right side as Austin Howard calls the signals. He's getting the play in from the sideline. Howard flips it over to Tillery. One of those little moving screens where you get a couple of the, your big friends out in front of you and you hope to kind of slip something right there. But the Tigers defensed it well. Raheem McMorris up from the corner spot, making a play. And like you mentioned, you want to get the ball in the hands of your playmaker and get him behind the blockers, but they were shed in blocks and there just wasn't any space to run. This is a, a small win for the TSU defense. They have not really been able to stop Southern, so to bring out Southern's punter is a small victory for them. It is Greg Pittman. Not only does he do the field goal duties, he also does the punting for the Southern Jaguars. He will punt it away. Malik Cross back to return it for the Jaguars, a big play and it's blocked. The Tigers blocked it, a big play coming in on defense. Big that plays. is number 20, Clyde Lee rushing in from the right side, he got in unblocked. Clyde Lee appears to be a little shaken up, but what a big play. The Tigers are being so aggressive, forcing these turnovers today. And you see he goes in there, he flies in untouched. Then he tries to scoop up the ball so he can score, but they eventually get down on it, and now they give their offense another chance at a score with great field position. TSU's going to have to take advantage of this ball. What a job, though, the TSU special teams and the TSU defense is doing today as far as turning the ball back over right. to the offense. This is the second turnover that puts the offense in excellent, excellent field position. Avion Hertz and company will start first and 10 from the 18-yard line. Hertz looking to throw it, flips it out wide, has Malik Cross. He makes the catch, and he's in for the touchdown. What an adjustment by Malik Cross. He saw where the football was, came back to make the catch, and the Tigers are on the board with the touchdown. Nice adjustment, as you mentioned, and this is such a hard play for the cornerback to defend. It's over the back shoulder. He does a great job adjusting to the ball, and the cornerback never knew where that ball was being placed. Well, I like the way, you know, usually they tell you to catch the ball in your hands, but I like the way Cross got it in his body right. because under the conditions today, you want to do everything you can to wrap that ball up, and he did it. So Medina is on for the extra point. Hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. And we have ourselves a tie ball game. Malik Cross, one happy young man as the TSU Tigers have tied the Southern Jaguars 21-21 as we head to break. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish, it's not boastful, it's about men sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together.
Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. And a big block right there by Clyde Lee to set up the TSU offense. And then Avion Hurts throws it, the back shoulder throw to Malik Cross. He takes it in for the touchdown. And what a play by the Tigers. We are tied at 21-21 with 11.47 to go in the second quarter. High scoring game, a lot of action. I tell you what, you have not had a chance to just stop and you know just enjoy the game because we're always talking about the big plays, the big returns. And TSU Southern now tied up and locked up. Well, okay, let's go down to the sideline to Nick Strong for an update. Nick. Yeah, guys, number 20, Clyde Lee. It looks as though he's going to be out. He's actually getting carried out on a stretcher right now. It looks appears as he was kicked in the neck or it, he took something to the neck because he was having a breathe, he was having a problem talking and breathing on the sideline. His return is doubtful. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Nick. And, of course, that was Quinn on the return, and, and that guy may be the most patient returner <laughs> there is. Very patient, but this is a big, big stop for Texas Southern's kickoff team. They have not been playing well on kickoff, their coverage units, so for them to stop him before he even gets to the 20 is a big accomplishment for their special teams. But have you ever seen a running back that patient before? I mean, he's literally looking around waiting for those blockers to form. And you know what? When you're that quick and that explosive, I guess you can wait an extra <laughs> second or two, but it did not help him out that play on that return. Jaguars have the football on offense. They will start first and 10 at the 18, uh, at the 13 yard line. The handoff goes inside. That's Tillery. And he is taken down right there. Zacchaeus, Bami Joko, one of the Tigers to get there in a hurry. Damon King also helping out on the tackle. And this is what you want if you're Southern on first down when you run the ball. You want to pick up those three, four yards and make it second manageable and third and manageable when you get to that point. So this is what they want. It wasn't a big play like we were used to seeing today, but positive yards on the run. Zacchaeus, very, very active today from his linebacker spot. Came off a blocker and closed that hole, and we have another flag down. And it appears the Jaguars are moving early again. Yeah, it's mostly... They call that false start on the center, Terrell Lee. So it must have been like a double pump on the snap or something. And I actually noticed a hitch in the snap, but I didn't think the rest were going to call it. But, you know, you called it correctly. Well, that's exactly what it was. He was right on it, so that's going to push the Jaguars back. Austin Howard looking to pass, swings it over to Tillery. He gets a block, and Tillery moves it upfield before Bammy Joko is there to lead the charge again. Number six for the TSU Tigers. Very active here in the first half. And like you mentioned, he did get a block. It wasn't a big bruising block, but it allowed him to cut inside away from the defender. And the offensive lineman that threw that block was actually limping off the field, so he's going to be attended to to keep an eye out for his backup. Third down coming up for the Jaguars as the play comes in from the sidelines. Austin Howard will come out right now. He has three wide receivers out to the right side, trying to spread that TSU defense out a little bit. Third and about six. And there's another whistle on the field. And number six, you saw Nicole Talbert there throwing his hands up in the air like, what now? Right, <laughs> what do we do now? And it looks like the offensive lineman for Southern that was hurt was a starting left tackle, Reginald Redding. He's being attended to, so keep an eye out. When you talk about the left tackle and the protecting the blind side of the quarterback, very, very important position on that offensive line, so we'll see how Southern will be able to manage without their big left tackle, Reginald Redding, not being on the field right now. 
And while we have a quick second, uh, don't miss the TSU Tigers volleyball team when they take on Houston Baptist. That is on October 27th at 7 p.m. at the Health and PE Arena. Tickets are on sale now. As before, you can log on to TSUball.com and get your tickets to check out the TSU Tigers volleyball team as they take on Houston Baptist. That is October 27th at 7 p.m. We have a third down on the field now for Austin Howard and the Jaguars. Howard looking to pass. He does that same little swing pass again in the open field as Tillery, and there are a lot of purple shirts out there before he's finally brought down. And when you talk about in-game corrections that they're making, they're making them for the defense, Texas Southern. You're seeing now there just isn't anywhere for them to run. After they catch the passes, they're not picking up the extra yards. The pursuit is there, and they're making nice adjustments on the defensive side of the ball for Texas Southern. You can see Raheem McMorris, Archie Rice, all those guys, Jamal Lucas. They're running to the football now, and TSU should get it back in really good field position. Greg Pickman to punt it away for the Jaguars, and he gets this one off, a nice punt. Malik Cross giving chase. Cross hauls it in about the 30. Turns around, reverses his field. Cross goes down right at about the 30. So the Tigers will start first and 10 from there. I'll tell you what, we've, some, we've seen some really nice punts this game on both sides of the ball. And especially when you consider the conditions. Right. This rain has been steady. It came down what halfway through the first quarter it started coming down and it's been raining steady ever since and boy it has not taken away the big plays from this game and now texas southern they have a chance to put together a drive with decent field position but not the field position that they've been awarded from their defense when the defense gives them the ball in their own red zone you know you look at the stats avion hurts three of five for 79 yards and two touchdowns that's making the most out of your attempts, but it's because they haven't had a lot of field to cover. Handoff to Daryl Robinson, and he bangs his way for about four yards. His first carry of the day, Brad Woodard has been getting most of the touches. That's Robinson's first carry. And right there, that's vision. You know, when you talk about running backs, you talk about speed, toughness, patience, but right there, there was vision. He saw where the play was originally meant to go there wasn't an opening and he just made to this right and fell forward for some positive yards yeah to, to turn the negative into a positive second down and about five for TSU Hurts dumps it off inside right there the pass is complete and that is Tracy Johnson who hauled it in for the short game Tracy Johnson for the Tigers and the nickel back, Rashad Turner, Rashad Turner, he was not fooled on that play. He saw it coming, he stayed where he needed to be, and he made the play before they could pick up any positive yards. You know, you might say, why are they trying all these little quick screens? Well, on a day like this, on a slippery field, you can pop that for a big gain really easily, and, and that's why they're going to keep throwing that out there. But that was a good defensive play. Tigers are looking at third down now. Avion Hurts is going to pass it. In trouble, scrambling around, and he throws it up. He lobs it for his man, and it is broken up over there. A nice play by the defensive back. That's number 34, Rashad Turner again. All right, we called his name twice right there with run support on the first play, and they're defending the pass, doing a good job batting it away and not letting the receiver win that alley-oop. Well, he just wanted to give his guy a chance to get up and get it right there. Johnson got up, got his hands on it, but a fine play by, John, by the defensive back there. Really good play. And that's what you call those little alley-oop passes where you just throw it up like a basketball does his uh, teammate to alley-oop it and dunk it into the goal. Well, you just throw it up for your receiver to outjump the defender. Corey Carter's kick, and Willie Quinn, this time he's getting away from it, and, boy, that's the best thing the Tigers could do right there. Willie Quinn. Nice high punt. He had nothing he could do with it. We're in the rain here at BBVA Compass Stadium. We're watching a whale of a ball game. The TSU Tigers and Southern Jaguars tied at 21 with 7.28 to go in the second quarter. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, 
totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Ellen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation. Making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. It is a very overcast and rainy day here at BBVA Compass Stadium, but it's not really dampening the spirit here in the in the stadium. As you can see, we got a very nice crowd who's they're sticking this thing out in the rain. Oh, as they should because they're being entertained with some yeah. nice football, entertaining, unexpected football. But you're right, the crowd's into it, the bands are into it, and more importantly, the players are. Southern University is going to start uh, first and ten. Right at about their own 15-yard line. Lenard Tillery, of course, he's the leading rusher in the swack. He takes the handoff and a big five-yard burst right there. I was going to say Tillery so far, six carries for 40 yards in the game. You can make that 45, seven for 45. Zacchaeus Bami Joko again in on the stop for the TSU Tigers. And what I like about him, he's a mutter. I mean, he's just a tough runner. He'll pick up those yards. And like you see right there, as he gets the first down, he also will find the open hole and hit it when it's there. You're right. These may be his type of conditions. Right. Lenore Tillery, as I mentioned, he's the leading rusher in the SWAC, and he just took it two handoffs in a row, and they're going to give him a blow on the sidelines as it's first and ten for Southern University. Austin Howard, still at quarterback, slips it inside. And a big gain by number 48. That is John West. John West. Credit both of these running backs, but when you have two different running backs come into the game and pick up these big yards running in between the tackles, you also have to give credit to that offensive line. I've been talking about them a lot, and you see why as you see the big gaping holes that they're able to provide their runners. Another first down for the Southern Jaguars as that John West picked up that one. Tillery back in the backfield now for Austin Howard. Howard fakes the handoff and throws it near the sidelines. It's going to be incomplete. McMorris defending the play for the TSU Tigers. And right there you see the effects of the slippery ball. We've seen this and we've said it a few times today with the weather. It hasn't affected the special teams, the punting, the kicking, but it is affecting the re these receivers. Many of these balls are slipping through their fingers. It is, and, uh, you know, I almost question that because I, I'm old school. I think I would keep handing him that football. Until right. <laughs> the running game is kind of off to a good start. He throws a pass and kind of messed it up there. <laughs> Tillery on the handoff, and he goes straight up the middle for five yards. And he heard you. It's not just the running game, but it's also where they're attacking. They're really attacking the interior of that Texas Southern front four, and they're getting positive yards. I'm with you. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But they were trying to mix it up so they don't get too predictable. Yeah. Zacchaeus, Bami Joko again inside on the top. And that young man is playing a whale of a first half. We've called his name a lot. The handoff to John West and the big back, and he's going to be close to a first down before Bami Joko knocked him down again. Zacchaeus with another good stop. I mean, he's like very active from that linebacker position. And what Southern's doing a very good job of, they're not just handing off doing the traditional runs, but they're also picking up the yards with the draw. But again, they're attacking the middle interior of that defense. They're going to mark him short of the first down, so the Tigers are scrambling to get their punting unit on, and, T and Southern's trying to snap the ball to get the penalty. But everybody's clear. Greg Pittman on to punt the ball away, gets it high and short. 
and it's going to be down right there by the Jaguars. So the TSU Tigers will start first and 10 from around their 25-yard line. And I'm surprised the Southern coaches didn't put more thought into going for it, whether it was four down territory or not, with the success that they were having running the ball. I thought they would at least put more thought into uh, contemplating whether or not they were going to try to pick up the first down in between the tackles. This is something you're going to get a kick out of because because you were a big defensive lineman. So, you know, Coach Asbury told me this week they've been kind of playing around a little bit with the pregame meal because they're trying to when do you eat to get the best effect out of your team so now they're doing it four and a half hours before the game they're eating and of course that didn't sit well with some of those big big <laughs> linemen at all it's funny you bring that up i used to have a coach say you're always supposed to play a little bit hungry like a caged animal makes you play meaner but like you mentioned the defensive and offensive linemen didn't like that as well robinson knocked down there but yeah he goes on to say we also have a couple of coaches who monitor the situation so instead of having the two to three plates we've cut it down to one plate well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I told him i said well i didn't think the offensive lineman would be very happy about no. that tigers no gain on that play so they will go second and 10 from the 26 yard line avion hurts short roll to the right in trouble and he goes down on the sack you talk about rush lanes for defensive linemen. When you're rushing a quarterback, especially an athletic quarterback, it's very important not to get out of lanes, and that's what Southern does right here. They all stay in their rush lanes, and when he tries to pick up the yards, there just isn't anywhere to run because he's being corralled from outside, and the guys inside also stayed in position to make the play. That's a good point. 59, Christopher Jones got the credit for the sack, but it's really because the guys stayed in their lanes and funneled him back inside to the middle. Third down, handoff to Darrell Robinson. He escapes two, and then he's knocked down. So that did not fool the Southern Jaguars at all. A big stop in the backfield by Rashad Turner, another player that we've called his name a lot in the first half, making another big, big play for that Southern defense. And, Bush, we're starting to see both defenses starting to settle down, play with gap integrity, and understand the task at hand. Early on, they were both giving up big plays, but now both of these defenses are starting to settle down. Tigers will punt it away on fourth down, and Corey Carter has really been doing a great job. Boy, that one was almost blocked. He got it away, and, and I think it, it looks like it was number 89, Mike Jones, and I guess they didn't have the block on because Mike Jones did not lay out to block it, but Mike Jones was back there at the same time with the ball. He just made no attempt to block it. It was a little conservative. Maybe he was thinking, I do not want to run into this punter and give up some more yards or another penalty. So that is a decision you have to make on the run while you're going after the punt. Better safe than sorry, but he was very close to that punt. So the Jaguars will get the football back in really good field position again as the TSU defense will try to turn them back again. Austin Howard at quarterback. He's being pressured and his pass is incomplete as he overthrew his receiver near the boundary there. He's trying to hit number six, Nico Talbert, and the ball sailed over his head. Yeah, Nico Talbert, it sailed so high over his head, I don't believe he thought that the play was for him. You saw him look around to see if that was another receiver that he was thrown to. But like you mentioned, on the run, trying to throw on the run, very difficult, and the ball too high for Nico. Well, when you're playing under these type of conditions, turnovers really come into play, and you want to do your best to hold on to that football. But uh, passing the ball sometimes is going to come out like that because you, you, it slips out of your hand. Tillery on the handoff. With a big run and the ball is out again. We were just talking about the turnovers. Tillery was hit hard over there by the Tigers, and the ball came popping out. And let's see who has the recovery. Looks like Southern maintained the football. Well, from the reaction, possession. it does look like Southern. And remember, last week when Southern lost against Prairie View, they had six fumbles in that game. And with the way the conditions are, he looks it appears to be protecting the ball the way he's holding it. But before contact, especially when you're going to bring the impact like Tillery does on that play, it may be beneficial to put both hands around the ball, both arms around the ball to protect Raheem it. Raheem McMorris almost made that recovery. Pass is blocked, 
and it is incomplete. Jamal Lucas, it looks like he got a hand up on that one and knocked it down, and it's incomplete on the pass attempt. You see Lucas come in on the blitz. He sees that it's going to be a quick pass, so he does the smart thing and puts his hands up, and he's able to affect the pass even though he doesn't get to the quarterback. That TSU defense really playing aggressively now. Handoff goes to Tillery, and he is hit by Claiborne, and he is taken down right there in the hole. Big stop by Darian Claiborne. Big stop, especially because of where it came. They have been gashing Texas Southern inside of that interior offensive line. So with the run support, he's able to make the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Those are the type of plays they're going to need on defense because as of now, they've been getting gashed in the middle. Key third down coming up for the Jaguars. Austin Howard flips it over to Tillery, and he cannot handle it in the rain. You can see him bobbling the football, and he could not hang on to it. That's going to be an incomplete pass. We have a Texas Southern player down in a lot of pain. And it appears to be their star pass rusher. It looks like number 44, Amir Bloom. And he, and he is definitely in a lot of pain there, Indy. And it doesn't look like he's getting up. Amir Bloom led the team in sacks last year. He had eight sacks uh, and then suffered an injury during the season and he's back this year and of course big things were expected from him and let's see they got him up now and they're talking to him so hopefully this is not as serious as it first looked. It appears to be a leg injury as we see the replay at the top of your screen you see number 44 rushing from the outside. Oh tripped over his own man. That's what it was. Sekiru Asafatu was coming behind him. He got pushed down, and you can see right there as Amir Bloom is backing up, he falls over his own man. And that would be a huge loss for Texas Southern if he was not able to continue this game because he gives them so much coming from that edge. Well, you don't want to lose anybody, but that guy there, right. he, he gives them so much, not only from the standpoint of outstanding play from his defensive end spot. He's also one of the leaders on that defense. Well, just seeing him get, getting up on his own power, that, that's a good sign there. He's trying to walk it off. And that's a good sign, like you said, walking with his own power. But with that limp, I'd be surprised if he's able to play in the game today. Well, he's, he's had a fine career so far with TSU. The senior from Miami hopping off of the field there, and hopefully he will be able to come back later in this game. So we got Greg Pittman. He's going to punt the ball back over to Texas Southern with 136 to go in the second quarter. Tigers putting pressure on Pittman, and the kick goes straight up and out of bounds. It's another short kick, but they were close to blocking their second punt. Like you the said, game. there was a lot of pressure on there. And with the, both of these special teams, I mean, they're getting close when they're not making big plays, but they're very aggressive going after these punters. So you have a minute and 29 seconds to go in the second quarter. The game is tied at 21-21. If you're the TSU offense, I mean, how aggressive do you try to put points on the board in, in under these conditions? Very good question. With the How conditions, uh, you, you, you know what? You don't want to let the rain determine what you do. Yeah. Even in the NFL, college football, I've always had coaches where they say, look, if it's raining, it's raining for both sides, of, both teams. They're both dealing with the rain. But you don't want it to limit what you're doing. With a minute 21, minute 29 left in this game, you want to be aggressive, and you do have to take a shot downfield. Tigers on the attack. Daryl Robinson straight up the middle, slips a tackle. Robinson into the open field before he's finally drugged down from behind, and that play worked out pretty good. I'll tell you what, if you could pick up yards like that running the ball, then you continue to do that. But even with that big gain, I still believe they're going to have to take a shot down the field uh, during these last minute and 20-some-odd seconds. Andre Augustine hauled him down from behind, but, boy, he was, he was running that one. I tell you, this guy really gets his motor going quickly. He hit that hole very fast, and he is into the secondary, and the Tigers have it. First and 10, just beyond the midfield stripe. Avion Hurts, two wide outs to the right, two to the left, and we have another flag down. Ball start signal against Texas. 
Roderick Holloway, the referee, is going to back the Tigers up five. Apparently they're guilty of a false start. It looks like he's explaining to the coaches, the Southern coaches, what's going on. Malik Cross, the guilty party on that time. I think Mr. Holloway's mic has gone out. Yeah, it looks like it was Malik Cross. Everybody's pointing right. at number two, and Malik is like, me, what? <laughs> Not me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Malik Cross, and that should never really happen with a wide receiver no. right there. I mean, you're, you're out, you split wide, you can see what's going on. Everything's in front of you. Hold your water, wait for that snap count. It's going to push the Tigers back five. We're down to 47 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Handoff goes to Daryl Robinson, slips the tackle, and Robinson rips off another big run Robinson for the Tigers. As the clock continues to tick, we're down to 25 seconds. TSU trying to line it up. Avion Hurts looking to throw, going downfield to the big fella. And it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Carpenter, number 16, down the sidelines. Had a good shot at it. No, he did have a good shot, but just a little bit overthrown. Carpenter not quite quick enough or fast enough to get to that ball. Tried to lead his receiver, but overled him. And he had a step on the defender. He, he took a shot. He did have a step, step and a half. And uh, uh, you don't want to float that one. And it's tough to throw it in the rain, too, because it, it, the conditions. Now we're down to three seconds to go. So the Tigers are probably going to put this one up into the end zone, the final three seconds of the half. And keep in mind, they have the big 6'7 freshman receiver, Derek Griffin, so I would expect that to be Hurts' target. Avion Hurts was looking in his direction. He scrambles out of the pocket. Hurts into the open field, and he goes down after a big gain, and that will do it. That will be the end of a very interesting first half as the Southern Jaguars came out strong, but the T TSU Tigers forcing turnovers got back into this ball game, and we're a tied right now at 21-21. What impressed you the most about the first half? All right, right now the big plays is that you were able to see on special teams and how both teams were taking advantage of the big plays, not just the big returns, but Texas Southern responding with the turnovers that they were able to get. And as we watch the two teams filing into the locker room, you can see you know, the rain will not stop this show. We will have the crowning of the court, the homecoming king and queen as they make it out there. You know, that's why they make umbrellas for situations <laughs> like this. Absolutely. So as we're waiting, we're going to see if we can go down to Nick Strong in just a minute. Maybe we'll get a word with Coach as he heads to the locker room. Uh, when you look at this whole thing, the running game, seeing the way Daryl Ro Robinson ran the ball the last couple of carries, the Tigers may look to get him more carries in the second half. No, you, you absolutely want to do that. Go with the hot hands. Okay, let's go down to Nick Strong and Coach Asbury. Nick? Coach, great job by your defense in the second half after a slow start. What are you most impressed with? Just the, the whole team. Team after special team. We're creating turnovers, offense hanging in there. You know, we just got to keep doing a, a good job of, of play execution on both all three phases of the game. I think we'll be okay. Coach, on the offensive side, what adjustments will we see in the second half? You got a new ball game coming out there. Well, we're going to try to continue to, 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 until they can stop, take the double team off of Griffin. We'll keep working the other guys, and uh, we're going to make them make their mind. Am I going to double him? And let the other guys beat me. I'm just going to play regular defense. Coach, good luck. It's home coming out there. All right. That'll be the end for the first half. And we return more second half action from BBVA Compass Stadium. It's homecoming time at TSU.
Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. It is homecoming for the TSU Tigers, and you can see the homecoming court now being presented to the fans who are out here in the rain. The TSU Tigers taking on the Southern Jaguars game, tied 21-21 at the half. We will now pause for some halftime activities. Yeah. 
And what a performance by the Ocean of Soul. Fantastic performance. It's been an outstanding game so far. We're going to pause for a timeout and come back with a lot more from BBVA Compass Stadium. Relationships are everything, and when they're fractured, they can sometimes make you feel disconnected. Hi, I'm Carl Miner, pastor of the Church of Grace Fellowship here in Richmond, Texas. TSU's athletic team pastors well. Join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at the William B. Travis High School, 99 and Harlem Road. Come on, let's worship God together, witness one to another, and let us help reintroduce you to your best self. Go Tigers! The uh, Ocean of Soul is still performing down on the field, and we are here in the booth of a 21-21 game between Texas Southern University and Southern University. Of course, the big rivals from Louisiana in town for the game. Give me your thoughts on the first half. What surprised you a lot? Uh, what surprised me was how many uh, plays were affected on special teams, you know, how the score was affected on special teams with the return for a touchdown, the block punts, and the big plays. But what I like about the way this game's going on, the team started to settle down in the second quarter. And when you consider the conditions, it hasn't really been that sloppy on the field. No, it hasn't been yeah. sloppy. I mean, those big plays that we saw, it wasn't because of the rain. It wasn't because of a slick turf. It was just big plays made by players who want to win this game. It's the type of game, if you got up to go to the fridge, you miss <laughs> something so do all your business before the second half because what a game let's roll the tape take a look at some of the first half highlights and this one started with a bang as the Tigers kicked it off to Willie Quinn and it was right after we talked about Willie Quinn and how explosive he is as a returner he does this to open the game he takes it all the way down the sideline returning the opening kickoff of the game for a touchdown but TSU came right back Austin Watts with a fine return for the Tigers. And that's what I respect out of Texas Southern. They didn't get too down after that, and they took advantage of a huge mistake made by Southern. Right Nico there. Talbert in for Quinn, who had an injury. He fumbled, and then Brad Woodard diving in for the TSU touchdown. Tillery coming back. He got spun around. Of course, he leads the conference in rushing. That was a huge penalty. Right. The pass interference took it down in close, and Tillery banged it on in for the touchdown. And Tillery right now really taking advantage of that offensive line, and he's been running tough. As you see, he delivers the punch. And then Avion Hurts found a wide-open Larry Clark, takes it on to, into the end zone for a TSU Tigers touchdown. They, this game was back and forth, back and forth. Danny Johnson reversing his feel for another big return on the kickoff. Yeah, special teams playing a huge factor in this game. Then it's Malcolm Crockett. This big guy rolls inside. The ball comes out. And the Tigers made the recovery. And like you mentioned, if you closed your eyes or stepped away, you missed a big play because they were happening. Is there another runner more patient than this Willie Quinn? And then the block on the punt attempt. Clyde Lee racing back for the block, and then the Tigers cashing it in. The pass into the corner to Malik Cross. The back shoulder throw. He makes the catch. He's in for the touchdown. And what a game. Let's check out some halftime stats, and you can see as far as total yards, it's Southern 193 and then Texas th Southern 127. But Texas Southern has had great field position off of those turnovers. Right, they've had great field position. They've only had to go 25, 30 yards to score their touchdown, so that's why it's not reflective on the total yards on the stat sheet. You look at the rushing numbers, 124 for Southern and 50 for TSU. 
I expect the Tigers to have more rushing yards in the second half. Yeah, you expect the Tigers to have more, and you also expect them to shore it up on defense because early on they were getting gassed in between the tackles by Southern's running game, but then towards the end they were able to start stopping the plays. For the first half, it's been an opportunistic defense and some special teams, but TSU has made it all work. And right now, it's a 21-21 game. All right, Southern was favored coming into the game. Then the way they opened the game with a kickoff return for a touchdown, you thought they might get away from it. But you know what, Texas Southern, they believe in the game plan, and they continue to make plays. You know, and that's been one of the things. Texas Southern was actually down 21-7. Right. So, you know, sometimes you can kind of fold your tent and go home, but that didn't happen. They stayed focused. They got back in the game. They forced those turnovers, and that's why we're where we are. Hey, it's homecoming. They want to yeah. enjoy the party yeah. tonight, and the way you enjoy that is by winning your football game. No doubt about it. Of course, we're at halftime, a minute 13 to go left in the half. Tigers are expected to come out and take on the Jaguars in the second half. You said it's homecoming. They would love to go to that dance tonight with a victory. We are tied 21-21. We'll pause for a quick timeout and come back with the opening kickoff of the second half here at BBVA Compass Stadium. <laughs> This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Alan is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Halftime is coming to an end here at BBVA Compass Stadium, and we're getting set to start the second half between Texas Southern and Southern University. And just looking at some of the first half numbers, ND, Lenard Tillery, I mentioned he's leading the SWAC in rushing. He had 12 carries for 77 yards and two touchdowns in the first half, so he's kind of living up to the billing there. Uh, for the TSU Tigers, Darrell Robinson did not get a lot of carries in the first half, but he got the ball in, in the first quarter, but he got the ball in the second quarter, and he made it count. Five carries for 45 yards for Robinson. Yeah, he had some big runs, like you said, mid, uh, late in the second quarter. There's some gaping holes. So the question is going to be, will coaches continue to go back to him and allow him be, to be the hot hand? When you look at the passing statistics, Austin Howard, he was 6 of 11 for 50 yards for Southern. His long pass was 29 yards. Avion Hurts, 4 of 8 for 80 yards, but he had two touchdowns. Very, very efficient with that ball. Like you mentioned, he had a nice pass over the back shoulder, which was just very difficult to defend. He does a nice job taking care of that ball. And like you said, eight, uh, 8 attempts, 2 touchdowns. He's doing pretty good in percentage. So far, one catch so far for Derek Griffin. I would look for the ball to go his way a lot in the uh, second half also. Yeah, as Coach said, you know, going into half, Nick Strong did a good job getting the interview that they've been double teaming Derek Griffin, so he's going to continue to try to feed it to the open receivers and see if they're going to keep two defenders on Derek Griffin. That's a very good point because sometimes when that happens, when you create that much attention, 
you open some lanes for some of your teammates when you when you have that much attention focused on you. But in the red zone, even if they have two guys on them, we're talking about a yeah. six, seven wide receiver. That's where you throw it up and tell him to get it at his highest point. Look, some of the great receivers out there, college football, professional football, they get double teamed. They get safety help towards, thrown towards them, but they still figure out a way to make plays. And Derek Griffin can be that type of receiver. Tigers will receive the ball to start the second half, and Greg Pittman's kick is underway. It goes deep into the end zone over the head of Austin Watts. So the TSU Tigers will start first and 10 from their 20. It's very important when you have these type of games where it's a tight rivalry, there's homecoming, there's, you know, two guys, two teams trying to climb up in conference standings, how they come out of halftime, what was said in the locker room, which team is going to respond to the coaching that was taking place in the locker room, and you typically see that in the first, second series after halftime. That's a good point because you want to go in there. It was a very exciting first half. Both teams scored a lot of points, but uh, who's going to come out in the second half and, and, and steal that momentum? And it, it, exactly. They adhere to the adjustments that were made. Avion Hurts will be in the backfield. He has Brad Woodard with him. And he hands it in to Woodard, and Woodard has nowhere to go. He's knocked down. Very quickly there by number 90, Gabe Eccles. Eccles getting into that TSU backfield, making a big stop to start the second half. And a compact nose guard, Gabe Eccles, only 5'11", 290 pounds. But you see right there, he's also very quick, not just a big stout defender. That's going to bring up second down and about 10. No gain on the play. Avion Hurts with two wide receivers split out to his left. Fakes the handoff to Woodard. He's looking for Griffin, and then he runs out of time. Avion Hurts has hit. The ball is loose. It's picked up by the Jaguars. And finally knocked down. That's number 94, Aaron Tiller, who came up with the recovery. But for just a second, Avion Hurts had time, but then that time went away. He had uh, time, and you talk about that internal clock in your head when you're a quarterback and you have that much time in the pocket. You have to respect the defenders and know they're coming. A big mistake by Avion Hurts, which you typically don't see because he typically takes very good care of the ball, but right there the defenders are able to separate Avion from the football. He was hit from behind, fumbled the ball. Aaron Tiller picked it up for the Southern Jaguars, and just like TSU, Got the brakes deep in Southern territory, and now just it's reversed to start the second half. It's Southern with a big break early on in the third quarter. Austin Howard in that quarterback. Hands it off to Lenard Tillery, and he picks up four yards. Fine play right there. And right now the battle cry for Texas Southern when you give up the ball like this for their defense is, hey, let's hold them to three, let's hold them to three. You don't give up the touchdown, but you want to make sure that, hey, if they're going to score something because they've been giving the ball in great position, that is three instead of six. And one thing the TSU defense has been doing with their backs to the wall, they've come up with some really big plays today, and they have their backs to the wall again, and they'll be trying to see if they can close the door on the Southern Jaguars. Austin Howard hands it to Tillery, and he is stood up right there. A big hit inside, and he is knocked down. Damon King, one of the Tigers, making the stop on the play. I tell you what, when coaches talk about run support and playing the run and delivering the hit, that's what number 27 does on this play. I mean, you talk about a nice effort. Jamal getting Lucas. There. Jamal Lucas playing the play exactly the way it's supposed to be played from that defensive position. Jamal Lucas stood him up, and then Damon King finished him off. What a big play. What a huge, huge play. Third down for the Jaguars. Austin Howard looking for Tillery, swings it out. He slips, he's done. A fine play. Tigers on defense coming up with a big, big stop there. Derek Lyles is in the backfield and he blew that thing up really quick. And right there, one of the few times we've seen the effects of the field with this rain. He was slipping. He wasn't able to cut inside like he wanted to. He slipped down on the play, but he slipped down because he saw Derek Lyles <laughs> coming in a hurry. So he, And on the muddy field, he goes down. So the Jaguars are going to attempt a field goal.
Going to be a 28-yard attempt by Greg Pittman. His kick is up, and it's through the uprights. So the Southern Jaguars add three to their total as we head to commercial break. The TSU Tigers trail Southern 24 to 21. We'll be right back with more action. Hey, football fans, come out for a battle on the gridiron. It's the Red River State Fair Classic. Grambling State University takes on Texas Southern in the Independence Stadium on November 7th at 2 p.m. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com, Grambling State University Ticket Office, and the Louisiana State Fair Ticket Office in Shreveport. Your purchase ticket also gets you free admission to the State Fair. Don't miss all of the excitement November 7th in Shreveport. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. And as you can see, the rain continues to fall, but it does not dampen the celebration here at BBVA Compass Stadium as the TSU Tigers celebrate their homecoming. Joining me now in the booth, the president of Texas Southern University, Dr. John Rutley. You're here. Dr. Rutley, what a game. You know, you think all this rain, the threat of rain might spoil things a little bit, but we got ourselves a wheel of a game going on. Look, when you have this much rain, after a while, you just go ahead and go with the flow. So we're starting to have a good time with this rain now. I'm from Michigan. This is no big deal to me. So we're well, going to have a good homecoming anyway. And it didn't really wipe out anything because you got the parade in, you yeah. got the pep rallies That's in. Right. And we're going to win the game because they can't handle the slippy ball on the southern side. It, it's, it's been a, a really big celebration so far. It is. I want to introduce my new uh, chairman of the Board of Regents, Derek Mitchell. Derek, say hello. Derek? Hello. How are you doing? I call Obama. <laughs> Which we're excited today. I mean, I think the Tigers, we hope the Tigers win. Uh, it's rain, it's wet, so we're working hard. Okay, and Derek, you bring in the Tigers a lot of luck. Austin Watts just returned the kickoff yeah. after the field goal for Southern. He didn't take it all the way back, but he got a big return. He brought it all the way back to, uh, to midfield. Uh, tell me a little bit about you experiencing this homecoming situation here for the TSU Tigers. We had a great time. We had a parade earlier today. Unfortunately, it was raining, but I think we had a lot of folks out. The alumni out there are excited about Texas Southern right now. It's a good time to be a part of Texas Southern. Yes, give me, give me an impression of the, your impression of this football team and, and the heart they're playing with tonight. I'll tell you what, we got a lot of young kids, we got a lot of talent. I think this year and next year they're building on something, so we're excited. I think the, uh, our AD is doing a good job, Charles McClellan, and putting the folks in place, the proper people in place. Watch out, buddy. Okay, there was a penalty on that kickoff return, so the Tigers, are, the ball is going to be taken back a little bit, so they're going to start back into their own territory, but they're still going to have good field position. Dr. Rudley, just tell me a little bit about what homecoming means to this school and how, how important it is to, to celebrate the way you guys well, do it. Well, it's important for our graduates and alumni to, to, to really make a contact, a positive contact with the current students. Current students need to have role models. And all of our graduates are here talking about the pharmacy program, the law school, and music, business school. Everyone's here trying to give these kids an opportunity to make sure they get a good education and look at them in terms of where they could be in the next four or five years. So homecoming is about coming home and sharing with these young people. And we just saw Brad Woodard take the handoff with a nice gain inside for the Tigers. Right there, good pickup by Woodard. But you also, and this is the last question, you also have some former NFL players oh. back enjoying the, the festivities. Yeah, last night we had uh, 29 athletes who played in the NFL. We, we honored them yesterday. We actually have a total of 65 athletes who played in the NFL. We've had an athlete on all 31 NFL teams. And we're only 32 teams, yeah. so we've had an athlete on every team throughout the history of the NFL. And we celebrated them last night. Okay, Dr. Rudley, thanks a lot for coming Thank by. You. 
We really appreciate it. Thank Keep you. doing what you're doing because you're bringing the Tigers good luck right thank now. You, thank you. Nice to meet you. you too. Take I'm care, guys. That was TSU President Dr. John Rudley in for a little visit and bringing the Tigers a lot of luck. We're going to start second down now. Avion Hurts hands it to Woodard, and he is stacked up like no place to go. Coming in quickly to make the stop for the Jaguars. And, and you, you, I was going to say, you mentioned how the two defensive squads seem to be settling down. That was a huge stop for save for the TSU defense because right. they were deep in their own territory and they held them to a field goal. So that was huge. Right. Uh, you know, barring uh, another turnover for TSU's defense on that last drive, there isn't, el there isn't anything else you could ask for them uh, than to just give up three when they're giving up the ball right next to their end zone. Third down, Avion Hurts looking to pass, has a man wide open. That's Malik Cross. He hauls it in. He has the first down and Cross fighting for that extra yards near the sideline before he's finally spun out of bounds. And you can see the rain is starting to increase. It's really starting to pick up down on the field. The rain's starting to increase, but they're not letting that affect their play calling. They're still going deep. This is the second time today you've seen a wide receiver for Texas Southern wide open. So there's definitely some mental breakdowns going on with Southern's defense and their defensive backs. Great job by Avion Hurts protecting the football. You saw him with two hands on the football. Right. I mean, you have to do that under these conditions. A lot of times he would be holding that ball in one hand and looking to just cut it loose, but he had both hands on the ball, holding it until he spotted cross wide open out there. And like you mentioned, the son of a coach, and he plays smart football out there. He's so poised. I mean, this guy, he's a leader of the team, and you can tell by the way he carries himself. Had one huge mistake when he held on to the ball too long and gave up a fumble, but other than that, just a poised, nice athlete. He's done a really nice job for the Tigers since he's come in and become the starting quarterback here. Uh, he's made, I said, on the top four starts. So far, he has like 750 yards passing in just uh, four games. So he's off to a pretty good start. And I like the way he's been protecting the ball. Well, only one interception. Again, he doesn't take too many chances, but when he does get the guys wide open, he will sling it down the field also. We were going through some of those halftime stats, checking along, and, and you can see TSU picking up those rushing numbers like we thought they might. Hurts hands off to Woodard, and Woodard goes the wrong way. Do not go back, young man. He is taken down right there by number 91. That's Christian Allen, and that's a big loss on the play. I'll tell you what, Bush, sometimes you just have to take what's given to you, and if there isn't anything given to you, you just try to get upfield, even if it's a loss, because now you have what would have been a loss of one or two yards, a huge loss, and you put your team in a situation where they have to throw the ball. Tigers are going to be coming up on a second down and long. It's going to be about second and 20 as the rain continues to come down and uh, we, we knew it was going to be raining like this kickoff actually moved up a little bit today hurts on second and long has to scramble out of the pocket pulls it down gonna keep it cuts inside and he is tackled from behind by number 94 aaron tiller coming from behind to pull down Avion Hurts. And not just from behind, number 94 coming from that left end position, never giving up on the play. When you talk about hustle and getting big men down the field, you see he kept running and he was able to get the play, get to the play, get to the quarterback after only about a pickup of six or seven yards. That was Avion Hurts making something on the play. Now we're gonna have third and about 15 for the Tigers. He has three wide receivers out to the right. Daryl Robinson now in the backfield. Hurts looking to throw. Has Derek Griffin off his fingertips, and it is incomplete. He had Griffin on the slant, but he couldn't hold on to the football. Yes, and Derek Griffin, a little frustrated. That's the second time that he had a ball hit him, either in the shoulder pads or the hands, and he wasn't able to come down with it. And you see right there, it was a late hit, but I don't think it was intentional. He probably felt like Derek Griffin was going to catch it, and you see the sportsmanship. You'd like to yes. see that in today's game. No, no doubt, because he had a chance to lay a cheap right. one on him, and he held off it, and, and it's a good thing he did. So the TSU Tigers will have to punt it away. Oh. And the kick is blocked by Jones. It's blocked, and it's recovered in the end zone. Let's see. No, it's out of the end zone. Oh. 
Oh, the Jaguars wow. were trying to recover the ball in the end zone, and they pushed it out of the end zone. And like you mentioned, the rain is coming. It's coming much. It's coming down more than it was in the first half, and we're definitely starting to see the effects of it. Mike Jones, number 89. I remember I told you he had a shot at blocking right. one earlier. He blocked that one. They go back to it. Jones had an easy touchdown, but he did not recover the football, and they knocked it out of the back of the end zone. And you notice Jones slowed down to try to make sure he could secure that ball, but that thing is so slippery now, it just popped out of bounds, and that's a lucky break for Texas Southern. They give up two points instead of six. No doubt about that at all. No doubt about it. Jones, we mentioned that earlier in the game because he had a chance. He was back there on an earlier punt and made no attempt to block the punt, even though he was back there at the same time with the ball. That time he made the block. The ball scrambles into the end zone, and it goes into the end zone, and they can't make the recovery, and there were like four white shirts right there with an attempt to make the recovery on the play. And you know what, Bush? You did a good job bringing that up in the first half. And when we talked about uh, locker room adjustments, halftime adjustments, I bet he went to a special teams coach and said, yeah. Coach, I think I can get there. And they said, okay, you know what? Next time, go after it. There wasn't anybody who even attempted to block him. So those are those adjustments that we talk about at halftime that coaches have to make in-game adjustments. I'm still trying to figure out how they didn't get a touchdown on that play. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's like, a, have, you, have you ever tried to catch a slippery pig? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that looked like. And, you know, the pig skin and it's wet and the ball just bounced out of their, their grasp. You know, there's a perfect example. And you can see the wind picking up a little bit, too, because the rain is now coming down in sheets. But I agree with the, your assessment of it. It looked like he slowed down for right. just a minute and like he was making sure he would get it. So I don't know if it was, was his teammates running on top of him. Did somebody bump him and that squirted that thing out of there. So uh, it's called a pig skin and it'd be like trying to catch a greased pig. <laughs> right. it, it's the same thing. <laughs> so the Tigers will kick it off to the Jaguars. They'll punt it. So Corey Carter is going to be on in the rain after the two points. It'll be his job to punt the ball over to the Southern Jaguar. Tillery back deep to return it. Corey Carter, one of the best punters in the entire swag, and we've already seen some great punts from Corey Carter. I think this guy's going to be punting on Sunday one yes. day. I mean, he, he's that good. An all-swag player. He hits it in another that. beautiful punt into the rain. What a shot. Chases Jones all the way back into the end zone. A great kick. I mean, I, that, that is awesome. You just nailed it. I mean, you talk about him punting on the next level. If there are NFL scouts at this game, as they typically are at every single game, they're making note of that punter right there. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody, you know, after the two points when you have to punt for the kickoff, kick it into the end zone. I don't think, and I was about to say, and this is why I stopped, because I know what type of punter he is, that more than likely Southern was going to get good field yeah. position. But when you have Corey Carter punting it off, and you're not rushing him, then you know you're going to get a good punt out of that punt. What a great punt. I mean, it's his second of the game. He's had two outstanding yes. punts today, and, and, and it, it, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge break in terms of field position as to where they should have had the football and where they're actually starting. Defense's best friend. And Southern is going back to Deontay Shorts. He's in the game at quarterback as they start first and 10 from the 25. Deontay Shorts, he got to play in the first half, played well led a scoring drive, and he's back in the game now. I'll tell you what, I really like the way the linebacker Jamal Lucas is playing, especially during this second half. I mean, he's filling the gap, and he's bringing the pain with his hits. He's not just wrapping up. He's actually delivering blows on his hits. Deontay Shorts hands it off to Tillery. Tillery around the right side and down the sidelines, and finally knocked out of bounds by Dobbins. Andre Dobbins uh, bumped him out of bounds near the sideline, but that's going to be a first down for Southern University. And a vicious stiff arm. After I give credit to Jamal Lucas, he gets stiff arm by Tillery, but that was such a nice stiff arm. Most of linebackers probably would have had the same result as Lucas on that play. Tillery had 77 yards rushing in the first half, so he's on his way to another 100-yard game. Deontay Shorts calling out the signals. He hands it off to number 28, who slips the tackle. He's hard to bring down. 
and you see two offensive linemen as they roll out, and he just takes his time and gets behind them. Then once that opening hits, you see right there, then he takes it and gets the positive yards up the field. Archie Rice in from his safety spot to make the tackle on John West. John West got in in the first half and made the most of his carries, and he's kind of doing the same thing here in the second half. So the Jaguars moving the football now on the ground. Deontay Shorts hands it to West, and the bowling ball just bangs his way off tackle, and he picks up the first down. Now, obviously, both teams are playing in the rain, but if you had to ask which team will have the advantage with this type of weather, you think it's Southern. The way they block up front, you see the big guys staying on their defensive men and how their running backs are just so tough. I mean, all of their running backs are tough to bring down. Well, and they have the leading rusher in SWAC. Right. On, on in their backfield so that that helps too that really helps out but uh, first and 10 for the Jaguars now they'll be starting at the 38 yard line shorts turns and hands to Tillery room to run before he is taken down by Claiborne and you could see Darian Claiborne trying to strip that ball out of there while he's taking him down on the tackle and when you talk about the defensive side and how they feel, how they react to certain things, when you pick up and you give up from a defensive perspective this many yards on the ground, and now Southern's not only controlling the ball, but they're controlling the clock, it starts to set in and it starts to get the defenders to lose confidence in their ability and what they're doing. And you get tired during those long drives. <laughs> for whatever reason, the offense is out there also, but for defensive players, it appears that you get a little more tired than the offense during those long drives. Well, the offensive guys know where they're going, right. so they can conserve <laughs> that energy. The defense doesn't really. Shorts on the keeper. He ran the zone read. Ball is out. And let's see who has the recovery. The officials go to unstack. That ball came out as he was hit and yanked down. Boy, this would be another huge turnover if the Tigers come up with this one. It looks like Southern kept the ball. Southern maintains possession, but again, you can see the rain getting harder. It's kind of actually coming into our boot now a little bit. Yes, it's definitely coming down now. Ball security, ball security, ball security is becoming more and more important in this ball game. Shorts, hands to Tillery. He stood up and then taken down several Tigers there. On the play, Darian Stapleton got there first. He had some help from his friends. He's still able to pick up the first down, and like you talked about ball security, as you see here, I'm surprised he didn't put both arms around the ball as he takes contact, especially one because of the weather, and two, last week, they remember, they had six fumbles last week, so I'm sure the coaches have been preaching it, and they're especially preaching it now because of the inclement weather. We got 4.50 to go left in the third quarter, and for the most part, the uh, Jaguars has controlled the ball for most of the third quarter. Tillery hits it inside, and he is taken down by Callup Jenkins in on the stop for the Tigers. And just notice, as you watch them and you see this replay, just notice how far he gets before he's even touched by a defender. I mean, when you get two, three yards up the field before you even get touched and you're falling forward, it, it makes for a nice little running room and nice drives. Shorts with the pass out to, whoa, what a big shot there, a big hit on the play. He's completed his pass to Nico Talbert, and Talbert with a short game, but he's keeping the, the drive moving. They're going forward. They keep moving forward. I'll tell you what I like about that play call. They're able to attack the edges. They throw the ball so it just doesn't become too predictable. They've been picking up a big chunks of yards running the ball inside of the tackles, but now when you throw it, even though it's a nice safe pass and you attack the edges, you, you, it's not as predictable for the defense to defend. Okay, here comes a key third down in the ball game. It's going to be third, and it looks like third and inches. And if I'm Texas Southern, I'm stacking the box, and I'm putting my big linebacker, Jamal Lucas, in one of those A gaps because that's where they've been getting gas. So it looks like they're going to measure. They're going to take a measurement, and, but this is one of those plays that actually plays into the defense's hands, too, because you slow that momentum and you give them a chance to, to actually get a blow. Right, and that's what they need. Yeah. During that drive, they need some time to rest, to get the water, have the coaches talk to them. You're absolutely right. This is definitely an advantage for the defense, especially if, it doesn't, if it's not a first down. 
Yeah, the offense is checking. They want to know exactly how much they need for the first down. But, you know, you need a foot. You need half a foot. I mean, what, what difference does it make at that point? But the defense gets a blow that they really need, and it's going to be a huge, huge fourth down play coming up here. And we mentioned it before, this TSU defense has answered the call. And, you know, talking to Coach Asbury this week, he's been so pleased with the way they've been doing that, the way they've been forcing turnovers and giving the ball back to the offense, you know, in, in good field position. Right. And like you said, this is going to be a big play right here because not necessarily four down territory. If they don't pick up the first down on this third and one, I would expect the kicker to come out and they try to expand on that lead. But this is definitely one of those plays where defense, they're talking to each other up front. They're saying, don't jump off the ball. I think they fooled me again. That the, the down marker had jumped ahead. He had fourth down on it. Now it's oh, back to third. Down. Yes, it's third. <laughs> Southern probably said, wait a minute. <laughs> Third down and inches for the Jaguars. The give is to Tillery, and he picks up the first down. He's taken down by Jamal Lucas. Lucas is there to make the tackle, but not before Tillery comes up with the first down. And the Jaguars go quickly back to the line of scrimmage. They want to get this one off in a hurry. You saw Jamal Lucas there playing off the block and then making the tackle. Big play. Deontay Shorts hands it off to Tillery around the outside, and there's a flag down on the play. Jamal Lucas is there quickly. Zakia's Bami Joko also there making the stop for the Tigers. We'll see what the flag is. Holding on, uh, I think it was Montreal Jones. Montreal Jones called for the hole, so that's going to back the Jaguars up a bit. And you barely could catch it on the replay, but yes, he was holding the outside linebacker, I believe, and the linebacker, when he tried to spin out of it, that is when the ref was able to see the hold. So that's going to be first down. They're going to back him up a little bit. They're going to start now from about the 18-yard line. And the hand goes to John, handoff goes to John West. John West around the left side, still on his feet. John West near the goal line, and he is stopped just short of the goal line. But when he turned the corner, there was nothing but clear sailing toward that end zone. I'll tell you what, Southern right now, they're controlling everything on the ground. It's first and 16. They go right up the middle, and they still pick up the positive yards. Then look at the effort. You know, you give everyone credit. This is the ultimate team sport. But just watch the individual effort towards the end of this play as he tries to fight into the end zone. John West is hit by uh, Demetrius Johnson there. Johnson hanging on for help. And then look at Jamal Lucas with a big play in the backfield, throwing West down, but we have another flag on the play. But how about Jamal Lucas scooting into the backfield and making... 88 offense, 10 in front of the spot. Replay second down. Indeed, that's the same guy. And I, and I tell you what, when you get two holding penalties in a row, somebody on the sidelines need to have a little talk with you. Montrell Jones, again, called for holding. Yeah, and there's a situation there where his coach is not going to be too pleased because they had a very nice, and they still have a nice drive going, but to get back-to-back -back holding penalties from the same position, Montel Jordan right now really needs to understand what he's doing wrong and fix it before he kills what's been an impressive drive. Tigers declined the penalty. Shorts with a nice fake. He keeps around the left side. Near the goal line, he dives, and it is touchdown. The official with a late call, but he said he got the football up and over, and it's a touchdown for Southern University. Nice call. Again, with all the yards and positive yards, they were getting up the middle. They faked the run. Then they allowed DeAndre Shores to get to the edge and just use his athleticism and speed to get into the end zone. Darius Stapleton tried to recover on the outside, just could not get there to force him back inside. Made a dive, and he's in for the touchdown, but a good effort by Shorts to extend the football out and over the pylon for the touchdown. Pittman on for the extra point. And it is good. 
So that uh, took a toll on the Texas Southern defense right there as the Jaguars score the touchdown. Right now is 33-21. Southern leading TSU with two minutes to go in the third quarter. chicken or if it's been a while since your last visit no place does chicken like Frenchies our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location come on by Frenchies chicken where the taste lasts forever There's some happy fans trying to stay dry here at BBVA Compass Stadium. We're going to take you down to the sideline now while Nick Strong is standing by with a special guest, Winston Hill, former New York Jets star Winston Hill. NFL player, Mr. Winston <laughs> Hill, Mr. Hill, how does it feel to be back at home coming here? What was it like with your stay in Texas Southern? What was it like being a Tiger playing in the swag back in the 60s? Coming from a small town in Houston <laughs> to Texas Southern University, it was a very positive experience from the president on and it was great. What was it like moving on to the NFL? I heard you got drafted in the 11th round by the New York Jets. It was exciting. It was scary at first, but we had been prepared by our coaches and move forward. Life is about the future, not the past. What do you want to tell the people out there about Texas Southern University? It's a great university. President Rudley, the first lady, set the tone. The faculty follows up. The student body follows up. And certainly the players. Sounds good to me. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hill. Thank you very much. All right, back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Nick. And uh, Indy, I remember Winston Hill opening some big old, I'm a lot older than you, though, but I remember him opening those holes for guys like Emerson Boozer and Matt Snell, and uh, he was a heck of a player at TSU, too. I'll tell you what, uh, Texas Southern has some talent out there. Michael Strahan, one of the best to ever play, uh, is a uh, Texas Southern alum. Then last year, if I'm not mistaken, Walker, their defensive Trey back, Walker. Trey Walker, drafted to the Baltimore Ravens. He was the first area college player selected in the draft. He went in the fourth round, and that was before any player from the surrounding areas and the colleges here in Houston. And you heard Dr. Rudley say the Tigers have placed, have been on 31 of the 32 NFL teams. That's outstanding. Ari Avion Hurts looking to pass, in trouble, still on his feet, dancing around, and he is hit for a big loss behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of Tigers there. He was trying to buy a little extra time, and he could not uh, could not quite do it. He tried to buy it, but we talked about rush lanes earlier. He just didn't have any rush lanes as the pocket collapsed. The credit the interior guys. Typically when quarterbacks try to escape, they try to escape up the middle, but there just wasn't any room for him to go anywhere. Simeon Houston and company just keeping him hemmed in. They did a good job of keeping him right in the middle of that pocket. He could not get out, and so he'll take the loss on the play. Second down and 21 coming up for the Tigers. Hertz looking for the screen play, but the Jaguars stuffed it out. Number 34, Rashad Turner is right there to, to shut down that screen play. And just understood what it was. Rashad Turner didn't get out of position and knew that that was a screen, and that's why he was able to have so much success on that play, a heady play by Rashad Turner. Tigers are coming up with third and a 
Third and a little bit right there. <laughs> Third and a bunch. <laughs> he has three wide receivers out to the left. Hurts looking to throw again. He has cross open. He doesn't let it go. And then this time he runs out of time. He's spun down again. Avion Hurts in the pocket, taken down by Aaron Tiller for the Southern Jaguars. And I'll tell you what, he's upset as he should be, but that's more with his wide receivers. We call that a covered sack. He's sitting in the pocket, and you and I were both looking at the routes that they were running, and there was not any open receivers. That is what you call a, that's a classic example of a covered sack. Well, he had enough time because he was surveying the whole field, and then once you run out of time, though, you're out of time. And so he was sacked twice on this uh, possession. So that's, that's going to hurt. The Tigers are going to have to turn it back over. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. We are done with three quarters here at BBVA Compass Stadium. And the Southern Jaguars, the visiting Jaguars from Louisiana lead 33 to 21 over the TSU Tigers. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman. Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Allen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Town Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. And the band is still playing here at BBVA Compass Stadium homecoming for the Texas Southern Tigers as they take on the Southern Jaguars. I noticed during the break, Indy, Coach Darrell Asbury called together the whole team. And you could see, and I, I don't have to be in that huddle to know what he's telling them. Guys, you were down 14 in the first half. You came back. You're only down 12 now. This thing is not over. Let's get back into this ball game. No, you're 100% right. That is the nature of what he was saying. Because of how quickly they were able to get back in the first half, they should have the confidence knowing they can do it now. Corey Carter's punt is away. There was some contact on the play, but no flags go down. Carter went down on the play, but they did not throw a flag on it. So Southern will have the football, and they will start first and 10 near the 40-yard line. Like you said, the start is the fourth quarter, down by 12. But, hey, when you're talking about 14 minutes in football, that's a lifetime to get back. And this is where their defense, the Texas Southern defense, is going to have to find a way to stop the run because that last drive, Southern, they control the ball and they control the clock, and they are going to have to bring their punter out if they do want to get back into this game. As far as the elements, it, it's, it's still raining, but it's more of a, a misty type rain now. I mean, the, the strong stuff has kind of held off for a little bit. So we'll see who that favors. Southern with the football starting first and 10. Shorts hands it to Tillery. He goes around the right side before Dobbins shoved him out of bounds with some help from Demetrius Johnson there. And like you mentioned, with Tillery coming into the game, leading the uh, conference in carries, and you see why. You know, he has the ability to have the big gains, but he's always getting those positive yards, and that's why he's going to have another 100-yard game today. They're getting a lot of mileage out of that play. Shorts, again, hands it inside, and you can just see the pile moving as they got up close to the first down on that play. I want to remind everybody, you can catch the TSU football replay in HD after every home game on Tuesdays at noon, 
It's only on Root Sports, the home of Tiger football. So you can see they moved the chains again. That was a first down. And it's number two back in at quarterback, Deontay Shorts. He had a nice drive the last time he was in the ball game, and they put him at the controls again. Shorts, first and ten for the Jaguars. He turns and hands it to John West. John West coming to the left side and just kind of lost his footing there as he goes down, but a short gain on the play for the Jaguars. John West. Yeah, short gain, as bad as Texas Southern has been playing the run, the one thing that they have not given up many yards going out to the corners. They've done a good job throughout the entire game stretching out the plays, but for whatever reason, they've just been very weak in the middle. Big Damon King did give him a little shove there, but he, he got away with it. No harm, no foul on that. And <laughs> Actually, it's probably because of the wet sideline that caused him to slip. Second down for the Jaguars. They put the tight end in motion to the left. Zone read, Deontay. Shorts pulls it out, then he tried to throw the pass, and it's incomplete. And at the last second, he did try to get rid of that ball, but just put a little too much mustard on it, a little too high for his receiver to come down with it. They were hoping the, the Tigers would overplay it and over-pursue and come in, but it didn't happen. They, they, they played that ball, that play really, really well. And here's where Texas Southern defense has a chance to do something big. It's third and ten. If they can stop them here, get them off the field, and get their punter out there, they could give their offense another chance to get right back into this game. Handoff goes inside to Tillery. He slips the tackle. Tillery is into the open field, breaks another tackle, and finally he spun down inside the five yard line but what a run by Tillery Demetrius Johnson was hanging on for the ride and they finally got him down inside the five and I know I sound like a broken record Butch but they keep picking up these big yards running behind the center and the tackle that's that's been the weak spot for the Texas Southern defense and credit the Southern coaches not trying to go outside of the box if it ain't broke don't fix it that's why they continue to run those plays behind their center and two guards Tillery I had a chance to talk to as we watch this play go off right here, the handoff goes inside. And the Tigers with a big stop. I, I think that was Tillery. Let's take a look. But the Tigers with a big stop. Actually, it was John West. And several TSU players there to knock him down. I'll tell you what, that really takes a lot of air out of the defense when you continue to give up yards on the ground. It's one thing to give up a big play. You go back to the sideline and say, okay, let's fix this, that, or the other. But when you're picking up constant yards, consistent yards, running the ball, it's tough, and it's demeaning. Damon King in the backfield making the stop, and then the Southern Jaguars ran it right in. John West from two yards out takes it in for the touchdown, and now Southern has extended its lead over the Tigers. You talked about what the Texas Southern coaches were telling their teammates. The Southern coaches are reminding their players that, hey, look, last week against Prairie View, we were leading in the fourth quarter, and we ended up losing the game. So don't expect Southern to take their foot off the gas. John West in for the touchdown, and the extra point attempt coming from Pittman. Snap is down. Good job with the snap. And he kicks it up and through. And the Southern Jaguars have extended their lead over the TSU Tigers. Tigers go off to the sideline. They get set to return the kickoff, trailing 40 to 21. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful, it's about men, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together.
And you can see John West as the Southern Jaguars turned on the running game here in the second half. Lenard Tillery, of course, the SWAC's leading rusher, he led the way on that last drive, picking up all the big yards, and then John West finished it off, taking it in for the touchdown. You get the feeling Tillery will still be leading the conference and rushing after this game, having a big game, uh, taking advantage of that awesome offensive line that he gets to run behind. You know, I was going to mention a few minutes ago, I was coming up in the elevator with the Texas Southern defensive coordinator, Heisman Northern, and I was saying, how good is Tillery? Is this guy really that good? And he goes, he's that good. Yeah. He's that good. <laughs> you know, he said, we're going to have to bring our A game to stop this guy today. He's that good. So the kick from Pittman is up and it's short. Woodard with a fumble, picks it up, tries to pick it up, and then he's knocked down right there. Brad Woodard on the kickoff return could not get the handle on the football, and he is knocked down by Bradley Coleman, number 84. And you still don't need to get away from your play calls. You just actually have to execute them if you're Texas Southern. I don't expect them to see uh, three post routes in a row trying to pick up all of their deficit in one series. They still need to stick to the ground game, but they are going to have to mix in some passing. Okay, this is the time during the broadcast when I actually get to test you. I don't want you to answer right now, okay. but I'll give you some time to think about it. It's now time for the A Rocket Movers presents Do You Know TSU? Which TSU alum set the record for the most sacks in a season in the NFL? Oh, that's easy. I know you knew it. I, <laughs> that that's why I said easy. do not give it away. We will come back with the answer in a little bit. Tigers back to play. That's Jonathan Bowen in at quarterback, and he is sacked on the play. So Jonathan Bowen with his first action today at quarterback and he goes down. And I've been talking a lot about the Southern offensive line, but hey, credit that defensive line also. They've picked up their game in the second half. We've seen multiple sacks, pressure on the quarterback. They're playing some good ball. Simeon Houston has been in the backfield a lot, and he helped out on that sack also for the Jaguars. So Jonathan Bowen, who started the year off as the starting quarterback, back to pass. Bowen under pressure has to just throw the football away. He was scrambling out of the pocket and just had to unload it. Now, he was the starting quarterback, and he actually suffered a deep thigh bruise, and that kind of opened the door for Avion Hurts to get his shot, and then now the Tigers are going back to Bowen. And once again, you know, we talked about the pressure. The quarterbacks in the second half for Texas Southern, whether it's Avion Hurts or Jonathan Bowen, they just have not had the chance to get comfortable in that pocket. So Bowen is going to be facing a third and it's a little longer than 11. It's about third and 16 for the TSU Tigers. He has two wide outs to the left, to his left, Griffin to his right, and he hands it off inside to Daryl Robinson. There's a flag down on the play, and Robinson goes down at about the 13-yard line. And where the flag was thrown, you're going to think holding by the offense, but we'll wait for the ref to make the official call. Referee Roderick Holloway has been pretty busy. Holding penalty against the offense is the fly. I think the weather may have shorted out his mic. <laughs> it may have. I mean, that rain was coming down, but I'll tell you what. It didn't short out the excitement on the southern side of the sideline because on defense, offense, they're playing with the purpose. They have the momentum, and they're just out there playing with a smile on their face, having fun right now. Texas Southern is going to have to do something very quickly, whether it's special teams, defense, or offense, to get back in the game. Danny Johnson back to return the punt from Corey Carter. Carter hits another good one end over end. Ball hits. He gets a good roll again. I mean, this guy is fantastic. Good punt by Corey Carter. Big punt by Corey Carter, and that is where the Jaguars will start with the football first and 10. 10.32 to go in the game with Southern leading the TSU Tigers 40 to 21. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken. 
where the taste lasts forever. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. Relationships are everything, and when they're fractured, they can sometimes make you feel disconnected. Hi, I'm Carl Miner, pastor of the Church of Grace Fellowship here in Richmond, Texas. TSU's athletic team pastors well. Join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at the William B. Travis High School, 99 and Harlem Road. Come on, let's worship God together, witness one to another, and let us help reintroduce you to your best self. Go Tigers! It is homecoming for the TSU Tigers, and I tell you what, they're still celebrating in the stands, and uh, they hope to be doing some celebrating on the field here pretty quickly if the Tigers can turn things around a little bit. Right now they're trailing Southern 40 to 21. We are in the fourth quarter. And while we still have a little time, a time out on the field, let's check back, Indy, on that, uh, our A Rocket Movers, do you know TSU? Which TSU alum set the record for the most sacks in a season in the NFL? And you can have the honors. Now I can, now I can answer. Yes. It was the one, the only Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan, no doubt about it. Of course, Michael Strahan all over the TV set now, no matter what you turn on. Michael Strahan's there with his football on Sunday, the Kelly and Michael or whatever. That, that guy's doing fantastic. And, of course, another big gain for Tillery, ripping off a big gain and a first down for Southern. Tillery's getting close to 200 yards. We talked about him having a 100-yard game. Uh, he may finish with over 200 yards rushing. The pass to Talbert, and he stips arms his way before he's knocked out of bounds by Demetrius Johnson over there on the sideline. At the end of three quarters, it was Tillery 23 carries for 181 yards and two touchdowns. And then he just had a pretty big run. So like we said, uh, I'm sure if he knows the stats, which most of the time you don't know it during the game, he'll be begging the coaches to give him enough carries to try to top that 200-yard mark. Deontay Shorts back in at quarterback again. He's getting a lot of playing time in the second half. Jaguars fake the handoff with Shorts and Jamal Lucas forced him out of bounds over there. Fine play by number 27, Jamal Lucas. And you talk about fake the handoff, you know, it's a good play call. They fake out one defender, but the other defenders, they stay in position where they need to be. That's why they weren't able to pick up the positive yards. But a nice thought, fake to the guy who's close to 200 yards in between the tackles, and then take it outside with your athletic quarterback, but just a better job by the Texas Southern defense. Southern on the attack, ball goes to Tillery again, and Bammy Joko is right there along with Derek Lyles to fill up that hole quickly. They, they shut that thing down. It closed in a hurry. And as they bring up fourth down, like we mentioned, with nine minutes to go in this game, we've seen crazier things happen, but it's up to the Texas Southern offense to put points on the board this series if they want to get back in the game. Coach. Caleb Jenkins also helping out on the play. Did you see the poster boards over there that the Southern Jaguars are using to call their plays? Watch next time. They, they're pretty good. One of them has the Indiana Pacers logo on it. I so. did see that. I actually <laughs> did see that. It means nothing to us, but it <laughs> means everything to them. So the Jaguars will punt it away. Pittman hits the ball and is going to be short and bounces out of bounds near the 25-yard line. Malik Cross is not getting the chance to return him today. He leads the uh, SWAC in punt return, so they're doing a good job of keeping the punt return yardage. So they're doing a great job of keeping the ball away from him. And they're also doing a good job when you talk about Southern's defense keeping the ball away from Derek Griffin. We talked about the young kid who has 550 yards receiving coming into the game. He has been very quiet, 6'7", 230 pounds, recruited by almost everybody when he was coming out of high school, but he has not had an impact in this game today. So credit Southern and a couple of drop balls by Derek Griffin. How much do you think the elements help to take a guy like Griffin kind of out of his 
normal routine in a game like this. You know what? It helps, but at the same time, we've seen some nice throws, nice catches. Uh, I think it's more the fact that they're double teaming. They're using the safety. You can even see right now, uh, as we're watching the pre-snap, you have two defenders focus on Derek Griffin. Bolden fires one, and it's incomplete. He was looking deep from Malik Cross. Number 14 there to help out for Southern. That's the Mario Houston on the play. And speaking of Derek Griffin, coaches don't like to force anything, but when you have that talent, that size of the receiver spot, even with two men on him, I would, I would try to throw the ball high and let him get at his highest point. Actually, that was Danny Johnson uh, defending on the pass play, and pass play, and it's incomplete. Tigers will come up second and ten now for Jonathan Bowen. Bowen hands inside to Daryl Robinson. He slips one tackler, and then he's hauled down by two Jaguars. And Southern playing very stout up front. They have not been able to take, they have not given up any uh, big yards in the second half through the run game. Aaron Tiller helping out on the play, also with Daniel Brown in there making a big stop for the Jaguars. So now it's going to be a third down and Bowen needs to convert to move those sticks. Third and about seven yards to go. Bowen in trouble, and he goes down. I tell you what, that was an athletic play by the big man, Daniel Brown, 6'3", 260 pounds. He jumps over the blocker who's trying to cut him, but still has the whereabout and athleticism to bring down that quarterback. Just a heck of a play. He's going to enjoy watching this during film study. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It was Daryl Robinson who tried to make the block on him, and he right. He just jumped right over him. He, it looked like it was going to be a good block. He jumped right over him and went back to sack the quarterback. Danny Johnson getting set to return the punt from Corey Carter. Carter under pressure again. Gets it away. It's a low kick. Johnson wants none of it. And it's going to be touched down by the Tigers right there. Number 91, Caleb Jenkins touching it down. We're going to touch off for just a few couple of minutes. We're going to take a break. 6.58 to go in the fourth quarter. It's 40-21, to 21, Southern leading the TSU Tigers. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. We are back at BBVA Compass Stadium for the homecoming game for the TSU Tigers. And guess what, Indy? The rain is also back. We had we had a little break. But <laughs> now, you played in Texas Southern back in the 60s and the 70s and everything. And, the 60s. and, and what were some of the things that stood out about Texas Southern when you played there? Well, uh, the competition. Okay. You know, it was it was competition every week, you know. And we played against. Uh, I, I, I was playing against an all pro every week. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, so it was it was great. I, I, I remember the the 
the first time playing in the Astrodome, you know, and we played on, on my homecoming in, okay. in 6-5. Now, now, here's the thing. Now, you played for the Dolphins championship team undefeated. What was that like? Uh, that was like a dream come true, you know, okay. and uh, and I was captain of one of, the, one of the captains of that team, a special team captain. But it, it was uh, just something you, you dream about. Right. Now tell me this. Now what are some of the things you want to tell people about Texas Southern that's watching out there in TV land? Well, Texas Southern, I came to Texas Southern. I got everything I needed to take me to the pros. Okay. And, and I did everything I needed to do. Sounds good to me. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Now, Mr. Mumford here, we're going to send it back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Nick. We appreciate that. Lloyd Mumford, of course, cornerback for the Miami Dolphins, undefeated team. How about that? That's special. Only one undefeated team in the history of the NFL, and he was a part of it. Well, you know, the Patriots were as close right. as you can get. Uh, they were within a football sticking to a guy's helmet from, right. <laughs> from matching that. We have a new quarterback in for the Jaguars. He's number 15, Gerard Hayes. Hayes is a sophomore from Baton Rouge getting his chance to take some steps in this game. Hands it off to John West. And West goes forward for a couple of yards there. Big stops. Uh, Bammy Joko is also in there helping out with the stop. And you wonder if that's the last of Tillery, if, we were, if we're not going to see him again, as they have a comfortable lead with less than six minutes to go. But Tillery, just a heck of a day, very close to 200 yards. I'll tell you what, Butch, if, if he knew how close he was to 200 yeah. yards, he would be uh, well, chomping to get back I, in the I, game. Math has never been my strong suit in life, but I'm pretty sure he's over 200 yards. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the final. We'll get the stats in just a second here. But uh, he had a whale of a day. Yes. And, uh, it worked out really well. You see the Tigers switching around to the strong side. Hayes hands it inside. I think it was West again. And this is what you like when you're, if you're Southern, when you have these commanding leads and you see that they get to ro rotate different players in, you're getting the young guys experience in meaningful games. Bammy Joko again. I mean, that guy's been all over the field. He had something like eight tackles in the first half, and here he is again as the rain is starting to come down harder and harder on the field, and you may see the players having more trouble with their footing at this point now. Right. And in a situation for Texas Southern where, you know, they're going to need to air the ball out if they were going to try to get back into this game, uh, the rain coming down hard now is pretty bad timing for them and their efforts. You know, I've done a few games here at this stadium in the rain, and it actually holds up really well. We've seen a couple of slips, but not as many as you would expect with the type of weather that we've been faced with. Greg Pittman on to punt the ball away back to the TSU Tigers. Malik Cross waiting the kick, a bobble by Pittman, but he gets it away down near the sidelines, and it's out of bounds. All in all, a pretty good kick. And just like you mentioned, though, with the bobble, the ball's getting a little more slick, the rain's coming down, so... The number one priority on both sides, protect the ball. I think he feels happy just to get that one out of there. You can see it again right there. He bobbled it, got it down, and it was almost blocked there. Very, very close to making a block on the play. Number 41, Amir Wagner, was back there close to the punter. So Jonathan Bowen coming back out to for another series for the TSU offense. And with this victory, uh, you know, with uh, Southern leading the way they're leading, Willie Quinn, you've noticed we haven't talked about him in the second half as much. He was limping. I did not see him holding his helmet. When he first had that return, he grabbed onto his hamstring, so you wonder if there's something that's lingering and bothering him. But with a commanding lead, they're able to rest one of their superstar players. Wow. Bowen had Malik cross down the sideline and just kind of airmail that when it goes over his head. But that'll give you an idea of how hard it's actually raining down there. You know, if you see the wide shots, you don't, can't really appreciate how much the rain's coming down, and, and that's where it makes passing a little difficult. Yeah, it makes it difficult to see and to put the touch that you need to put on the ball. But he had him breaking open. They did that little rail route, and he was going up the sidelines. He, he was in good shape. So second down and 10 for the Tigers. Robinson on the carry, spinning inside, and he picks up a nice game.
and coaches, they learn a Dakota, lot from their, Excuse me, Dakota Starks and Martin Henry on the stop. And the coaches on both sides, they learn a lot about their players in this situation. What Texas Southern, you want to see when you turn on that film, you're down 40, 21, 19 points. You want to see, okay, who's not giving up on us? Who's not giving up on the play? Who's not giving up on their teammates? So this tells a lot about the character you have on your team. Bowen on third down, looking to pass. Under pressure again, slips away, and Bowen is wiped out at about the five-yard line. He is taken down. Christopher Jones, one of the Jaguars, in on the play. Yeah, I'm glad you said one of because so many guys are breaking free and doing a nice job rushing for Southern. They're getting a big push up front. 98, Daniel Brown also in the vicinity. Brown, for as big as he is, he's, he's a really good athlete. We've seen him make some moves. So that's going to bring on Corey Carter again with 3.52 to go in the fourth quarter. And for the most part, you know, the, the fans, you got to give them a lot of credit. It's homecoming, and these guys are looking to celebrate. But a lot of these fans are still here despite the rain. Despite the rain, despite the score, you're absolutely right. They're still here enjoying this environment. And credit Southern. I mean, they really know how to travel. They bring a lot of people here to Houston for this game. So the Tigers are going to punt it away out of their end zone. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, but I, I, I used to like playing in the rain. Oh, I loved it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It really did a lot to keep you from tight being getting completely worn out. It was a lot of fun. Corey Carter punting from his end zone. This guy could just yes. kick the ball. He gets off another outstanding punt. Danny Johnson on the return. He scoops it up. Johnson still on his feet, and the Tigers get him out of bounds. And not just playing in the rain, but playing in the rain on natural grass. There's just something about the mud spots, and I, I'm with you. I really enjoyed playing in the rain, uh, especially on the grass fields. Oh, there's nothing like it. So Southern's going to take over the football with 316 to go in the game, and I would imagine we're going to see a lot of it on the ground again. Yes, as they try to work that clock and get off the field and get out of town, I am with you. I'll be surprised if there are any passes on this drive, unless they get in a third and long situation. Gerard Hayes, the sophomore quarterback, back in the game. He keeps it inside. Bami Joko again is ever present today. Number six on the stop again. I mean, he, he's doing a, he's not giving up. He's out there playing hard. No, that's a good point. That's a guy that you know when Texas Southern watches the film and they watch the entire game, you see a player right there who's not giving up on his teammates and not giving up on the game. I like the effort, and I like the fact that he plays the entire game. Jaguars getting a lot of new players into the ball game now, trying to get some of their reserves getting some action. We're down to the 235 mark in the ball game. Handoff goes inside to number 43. I think that's Herbert Edwards on the carry. Caleb Jenkins. Caleb Jenkins for the stop on for the TSU Tigers. Claiborne in there. Bammy Joko in there. A bunch of Tigers still gang tackling around the football. And we talk about not giving up, and you, and you see it there. It's a team effort. I mean, these guys are going to play. They're going to play until four zeros are up on the clock. So that is one positive that Texas Southern can take away from this game. Jaguars hands it inside to Londres Johnson. And Londres Johnson uh, picks up about a yard on the play, and he ran into a stack of TSU Tigers. And guess who was there again? It's number six, Zacchaeus Bami Joko. He's bringing it. He was the first Tiger to get there. And it's as if his intensity is rising. So Bami Joko really taking pride in his work and what he does from that middle linebacker position. That's going to bring up a fourth down, and the Tigers will get to go on offense again. What are your impressions of this, Indy? What, what do you think was the difference in the game? We're 21-21 at the half, and 
it could have been that block kick. It may have been the may have been the even though they only even though they only got the two points, they, they got the ball back. Also, you, you know they did get the ball back and they scored. Uh, so you had an eight point swing, a uh, nine point swing when you factor in the point after. But it was a run game. I mean Southern they just started to attack in between the tackles inside the guards on many of the runs and that was the big difference the way southern was able to control the clock and control the time of possession excuse me control the time of possession and obviously the scoreboard with the success they had running the ball Greg Pittman is back to punt again he's actually done a really good job keeping the ball away from Malik Cross uh, Cross has only got had a chance to get his hands on the football a couple of times Got the punt away, crossed the sides to let that one go, and it goes into the end zone. So the Tigers will start at the 25. You know, you're looking at so many activities going on and with all this rain and stuff, but it did not stop the show. I actually almost became a part of the parade driving <laughs> here, ran right smack into it. And like, well, what's going on here? But. You know, they've had the pep rallies. You know, we've had the king and the queen. We saw the court at halftime. Uh, the halftime show with the two bands was fantastic. Uh, I mean, anyone who watches uh, SWAC football or knows anything about the SWAC or some of these schools that the band is definitely entertaining. I mean, I was sitting here dancing during the, in the press box, and I almost forgot that I was supposed to be working, but I really enjoyed the halftime show and all the festivities. I mean, it's been a great week for Texas Southern and their homecoming, homecoming week, and Southern to avenge that loss that they had last week against Prairie View with a victory against Texas Southern. It's a good week for them as well. I, I may say dancing very well for a big man. And when, <laughs> when, when he broke out the whip for the nene, I said, okay, it's just time. <laughs> too we, much. we need to stop. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's been fun having you in the booth, man. Oh, I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. You make this very easy. TSU Tigers. Now we're down to 58 seconds to go in the ball game. Jonathan Bowen. Has Daryl Robinson. He's the running back in the backfield. Bowen's going to air it out. Looking deep. Oh, and a misdirection there. He and Cross were on the wrong page. Cross went out to the flag when he thought he was going in, and the missed connection caused the interception on the play. And you see the defender doing a good job. They always teach receivers and cornerback safeties, catch it at his highest point. He tips the ball, tip drill to himself, and comes down with the interception. Kajana Curtis is on the field and made the interception for Southern. Nice interception, too, but it was just a missed connection on the route. He thought he was going to break to the post. He broke it out to the flag, and Curtis in the right spot at the right time. And this is where you expect Southern to take a knee, run out the clock, and leave the town with the victory. So they go one and one against Houston area teams. Southern losing to Prairie View yesterday, excuse me, last week, but they are able to get the victory against Texas Southern. Tigers played hard today, though. You know, they got nothing to hang their heads about right. in this one. That, it was a whale of a first half. Uh, I don't know if you know Coach Daryl Asbury actually grew up in Baton Rouge. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure he would have liked to have had this one go the other way to give him some bragging rights whenever he goes back home. There's a fumble on the play. Texas Southern goes. And Texas Southern coming up with the fumble on the play. Jamal Lucas looks like he's at the bottom of that pile. Right. I'll tell you what, <laughs> like you've mentioned, uh, they definitely do not need to hang their heads, but they also should be very, very proud. And I'm talking about the Texas Southern coaching staff on how their players just continue to fight regardless of the score and the time on the scoreboard. Caleb Jenkins was down there. Was he the one that got the football? I really couldn't tell. Let's see. Hayes just fumbled a snap, and it looks like it was number 91. Caleb it Jenkins. On the football quickly, giving it back to the TSU Tigers with 38 seconds to go in this game. Jonathan Bowen, I wouldn't be surprised to see him air one out to Mr. Griffin. Let him climb the ladder. Bowen under pressure again. He is taken down. The pressure has been relentless. Jerron Johnson was there to make the sack for the Jaguars. 
Right, and it's tough to air it out or to look down the field to a weapon like Cedric Griffin when you do not have time and you're more worried about eluding sacks than you are hitting your wide receiver. And I've been watching Cedric Griffin, his body language, you can tell he's a little bit frustrated with the way this game is going for him. Bowen dumps it out here to Robinson, and Robinson throws a couple of nice moves, picks up a couple of yards on the play before he is knocked down, and that is your ball game. Homecoming for the TSU Tigers is now in the history books. The Southern Jaguars come in from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and uh, thanks to a big, big second half, they go on to knock off the TSU Tigers 40 to 21. And I, I agree with you, Indy. It was all about the running game. And that will do it for us from BBVA Compass Stadium. Final score, the Southern Jaguars 40 and the TSU Tigers 21.